Well, that was a good one. Yeah. Hi, people. We're back. Round two. We're brought to you by water because drinking is bad. <laughs> yep. Cheers, good sir. Cheers. Um, That's pretty good water you got. Huh? That's pretty good water you got. It's, it's store brand. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm a I'm a store brand kind of guy. Yeah. I, I don't have any problem with uh. Let's see what's what's one of the silly names like, uh, honey honey nut circles. <laughs> or like honey nut Cheerios. Cheerio, yeah. yeah. But like the store brand honey nut circles. Is yeah. That what you're saying. Oh yeah. yeah. And then uh. It's all the same shit. Yeah. You know, it's half the price. Club crackers. Is, yeah. Uh, buttery smooth crackers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's all I, the same. I don't got a problem with it, especially like, I mean, that Dayquil over there mm-hmm. is it's the store brand. Right. And it was like $3 less. Yeah, it's just, it's literally just the name, mm-hmm. like the brand name, you know. One thing I will say, though, um, I got this uh, Dollar Tree shampoo, dander, like dry scalp stuff. Mm-hmm. And that stuff uh, doesn't was, work. It was, it was bad. Oh, it, yeah. It was causing my head to be more dry. <laughs> so I, I went ahead and actually got the name brand. Yeah. You know, head and shoulders and. Sure enough, it works how it should. Yeah, head, head and shoulders works good. It works it, well. Yeah, and I don't even have the shampoo. I have the stuff that's in like in the the tube, and it's not like oh, yeah? liquidy. Oh, I guess wow. you could say you kind of like squeeze it out and hmm. kind of rubbing your hands. Interesting. It works extremely, extremely good. You ever heard of Duke Cannon? No. It's Duke uh, Cannon. yeah, Duke Cannon, like mm-hmm. uh, Duke, like University, and like yeah. Cannon, like Gun Cannon. Um, it's just like a what, what, what toiletry brand, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, toiletry or like body product brand, but they like support the military and like donate proceeds to the military, and uh, yeah, I just started using their body wash. It's it's good. I don't know. You can get like, at Target. It's like one of those. Uh, I feel like the thing nowadays is like plant based, getting away from all that bullshit. And it uh, it's not like all, nah. all natural okay. thing, but it's it's good. It's nice. Yeah. Yeah, I just got some hand soap today, and. It's like the good stuff, the foaming hand, so- hand mm. soap. Yeah, mm. you gotta love the foaming hand yeah, soap. Yeah, I but agree. Yeah, that one, I'm pretty. You can even tell by the label before you get it. They have like, people tend to, or companies tend to put like, you know, a plant kind of look to it. it yeah, doesn't green. Look, of some yeah, sort. they indicate to you that it's like this natural, natural. stuff. Vegan. Yep. Not tested vegan. on animals. It's from California. Yeah, yeah, but this stuff is like plant based and all the other shit. So yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty good. I like that stuff, but most of the time it's like three times the price of yeah, the regular. That's the annoying thing. So it's you know, yeah, like the body wash I have is also like more of a plant thing. It's not completely yeah. When you get into that realm, when it's like completely, you're basically just going outside and chopping a weed up and then wiping <laughs> it on yourself, mashing it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you you get into that stuff, you're paying like ten dollars. <laughs> yeah, or actually, that's probably cheap well over that much yeah well the other thing is not only is it more expensive but like the size of the bottle is usually a, a good bit smaller so like it'll be like for like a 15 ounce bottle of body wash like regular it's like you know four or five bucks but like the plant-based one is like 10 ounces and it's like eight bucks or something like that so yeah it's kind of annoying yeah it's like a dollar shave club you ever use them no yeah no it's um i don't use i use an electric razor so Oh really? Yeah. Yeah, I, that one's pretty common too. But uh, Dollar Shave Club is basically, eh, it's basically a scam. You could put it that way. Really? Not not intentionally, but th- it's a scam because you you pay. I'm not talking about the razors. Like when when they were young or whatever, and the their thing was like just razors. Yeah. It was a subscription razor thing. Yeah. It's probably really good, um, and it, it still is because you get like decent blades and all that right and decent a decent handle but now they they're doing everything yeah like very ch- diversified yeah, yeah. chapstick <laughs> yeah, yeah. hair pomade yeah deodorant shampoo yeah all of that stuff is the size of it is all Small. way smaller like the even the deodorant is like i don't know what standard i think it's by ounces yeah like what standard uh ounces uh, al- yeah ounces I, I don't know it is but I was compared to like Old Spice, and it's way less. And their hair pomade, it was like, I think it's four ounces is the standard thing for that hair pomade. Right. Yeah, but it was like two. Right. But you pay like a premium, and the their same price as the four ounce. Yeah, their their chapstick, a two pack was like six bucks. Yeah, that's 
Apple yeah, I was like, right? What? Yeah. Yeah, so I, I quit buying all that shit. It yeah. is convenient, but it's just not worth it. Right. It did yeah. smell good, too. Yeah, it's definitely a, a premium. Yeah. You gotta pay for it. Their cologne, though, I do use their cologne, and their cologne is it's pretty, pretty legitimate, yeah. Mm. Like, even the... Uh, ended up getting stolen from me in Prague <laughs> coming through the airport. Some jackass took it. I just got it to his, um, one of the, like, standard size cologne ones, and I think it was, like, $42. Mm-hmm. Smelled really good, but that was short-lived. <laughs> like, uh, airport employee? Like, during um, customs or, like, bag check? They, I'm guessing, yeah. Swiped it? <laughs> I'm guessing, yeah. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, and I was thinking, wait, was I in the wrong? I'm pretty sure I can bring that through. Which yeah. you definitely can. You know the amount of people that bring beer and yeah. all kinds of shit in their well, luggage. Well, in the duty, f- you know, duty free, like yeah, th- th- like m- half their selection is cologne and yeah, perfume. I've never all used the duty- one of those. The uh, me neither. Yeah. yeah, me neither. I don't get it. It's just tax free. Yeah, but people go there and they buy like ten cartons of cigarettes and shit like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, I don't get it though. It's like. I, I get it more in a, like, I'm pretty sure Qatar or Qatar. Yeah. I don't know how their alcohol thing is over there. Pretty but, strict. Um, I could see it obviously being really popular in the Doha airport mm-hmm. because of, I don't know, out in town, once you leave the airport, yeah, you can't, you can't it's get hard alcohol. to get it. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah it was a I nice airport. I think there's, like, uh, I don't know about Qatar, but I think in, like, the UAE, in, like, Dubai, like, there's, like, certain hotels... Like the Western hotels, yeah, you can get alcohol there. Yeah, you can't like take it out anywhere though. It's like kind of like get it like room service kind of thing. Uh, matter of fact, I think Bangladesh was even like a a drier country. Really? Um, are they Islamic there? I don't think so. Huh? Are they Islamic? There? Oh yeah, they are. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's definitely their like they're to the point where Sunday is their first day of the week. Okay, it's, they're on that level of uh, Muslim pop density, uh-huh. but um. They, there was hotels out there, the more fancier ones. And like, if people like us showed up to like get, get drinks or something, they would like, apparently they would always like serve us. But if a, like a local showed up, they'd be like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> report them to the, yeah, report guess, them to the authorities. Yeah. Just report them. Yeah. Be like, no, you can't do that. It's That's like probably what they, 30 lashings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You want to get into the, uh, the how can we put it? The gate recognition. Yeah, yeah, we can start there if you want. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the the idea is uh, something that I've thought of. Um, you, as a person, subconsciously learn to recognize how someone walks. Mm-hmm. And what really did this for me was, I guess you could say, COVID, because uh, at my last job, uh, you know, standing there and watching people come up mm-hmm. who I saw every day um and before covid because i I was i was in the netherlands long enough to be there before covid and after Mm -hmm. see the difference um before when they don't have like wouldn't have a mask on and like all covered up uh i could like see them from a distance and then i could like see their face and everything right and then i'd be like oh yeah that's that person but i wasn't sure that if i knew that because of how they walked or because I could actually see them. Well, then when COVID kicked off there, they would, before they got inside, they would have their mask on. And some days it would be like, cause the weather's not too good there. They'd like, uh, it'd be raining mm-hmm. and they would like have their hood on. So you, you couldn't, you could not tell who it was, but I still knew who it was because, and I was like, it's because of their, how they walk. Right. Like I never, but you'd never sit there and study someone and go, okay, so that's how they walk. Okay, got it. You never, like, do that. You just subconsciously learn someone's pattern of steps, how they sway. Swagger, yeah. yeah. And then you learn it. Yeah, and it's like this, subconsciously. Yeah, it's it's weird. Like, why do we do that, you know? Uh, like, why is that beneficial to us? I don't know if it's, like, an intentional. Like, I don't know if, I don't know if we learn it for, like, a specific purpose. I think it kind of just comes naturally yeah. with... Uh, well, repetition and like recognition like over if you see the same thing every day you're mm-hmm. gonna remember it you know that, I almost want to put a face to a pattern yeah 
but yeah. it's almost like everything that you because that's definitely a subconsciously learned thing oh for sure for but sure. when your brain is devoting energy in the background to learn that it seems yeah. like there's always a reason behind it like a reason for your brain to have there's probably an area in your brain that yeah. its sole purpose is to is recognizing yeah. the gait of someone like a like a primal instinct kind of thing yeah but like why would we learn that that's uh, not it doesn't seem like it would be that you just look at the person yeah like, oh i know that's him it's like why do we learn that like it's obvious mm. when we learn what someone's look what someone looks like and then you recognize them you recognize their voice that's like pretty obvious right um, cause if they're talking to you from the behind, you can't see them. Then like, Oh, that's that person. Mm-hmm. Or I don't know. They don't say anything to you and you like happen to glance over and you just see them. It's like, Oh, there's that person. Right. And then when you say, yeah, that's, that's them. I can tell they walk. Oh, they walk. Yeah. It's a, it's a weird thing that your brain learns. And I don't know how they even like, who I would even talk to about this. <laughs> like who, who's in the business? Well, you're talking to the right guy actually. Cause I, oh, yeah? I, well, I mean, I've been to tracking school, so I kind of know a little bit oh, about Jesus. the whole, uh, yeah. actually that, yeah. that, that makes it, we'll, we'll spill the beans on that one. What all you got? Yeah. So as far as like human gait goes, it's uh S2 P2 doctor is the little ditty. So you got stride, straddle, pitch, depression, dwell time and rhythm and balance. Oh, so uh, what is it? S S2 P2 doctor. So stride, straddle, pitch. Okay. So those are the people that study this stuff. What? The just walking. Oh yeah. Well, it's okay. for for tracking, yeah. They call them a doctor? They're a doctor? S2P2 doctor is like a <laughs> ditty. It's like the uh Oh. It's okay. like the acronym. Yes. Do- yeah, so, so doctor is an acronym. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, S like S, two S's, two P's, a D and an R, so it's stride, okay. straddle, pitch. All right. Pattern dwell time and rhythm okay so like what are all those things yeah so stride obviously is the uh length between it's like the the left and then a right uh like forward or backwards the length between the terminal point which is the like the toes usually if you're Mm -hmm. walking forward and then uh straddle is the horizontal distance Okay. So yeah, because some people step like a, walk like a damn cowboy, right? Uh, yeah. So that's gonna be pitch. That's the next one. Oh. So, so stride. You can measure how far their steps are going, uh, you know, lengthwise. Then straddle is whether it's a wide straddle, a narrow straddle, or a neutral straddle. Pitch is that the the angle of the feet in or out or neutral. What's the next one? Stride, straddle, pitch, well, uh, pressure, I uh, think. Or what did I say? Dwell time and all uh, that. Stride, straddle, pitch. I think it's pattern. Pattern is just like the general, like, uh, the general, like, layout of the of the prints. Mm-hmm. If it's, like, pretty symmetrical or asymmetric or leaning towards the left or leaning towards the right yeah. kind of thing. Dwell time is just the depth of the print into the ground. So, like that can tell you if they're carrying weight or if they're injured, maybe if they have like a limp on one leg, that side will have a deeper print than the, than the, uh, the other one. Yeah. What else? Dry travel pitch pattern dwell time. And oh, rhythm. Yeah. Rhythm again is just the same. It's like how many on the left or right, you know, Mm -hmm. kind of tell. Yeah. And plus people might be like, heel walker so to speak they dig their heels into the ground versus their toes more yeah yeah Yeah. Hmm. you can tell it's pretty easy you can tell if someone's walking forward or backwards by that that prime it's the primary impact point and the terminal point Hmm. like the primary impact point will be like the heel the terminal point would be the toes when you're walking forward and then the opposite for so if they're walking backwards seems like their toes would hit first yeah primary impact points the toes yeah okay Huh. And when you can, when you look at the ground, you could tell uh, which is which. You know, like you could identify the primary impact point and the terminal point based off of how they look. Mm-hmm. You got now, terminal point uh, going forward. You'll have like a little push off on the toes. Yeah. It'll be pushing backwards. Where walking backwards, the terminal point is the heel. And you'll see like a little pushback. Mm-hmm. 
uh, to the to the front. And then when they're running, you can probably definitely tell. Oh yeah, 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 because the stride will be way longer. Yeah, and then more more uh, depression, more yeah. dwell time. Kick or not up. dwell time, but pressure. Yeah, and it kick some dirt up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, way more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is there um, any? Well, I'm sure there is some kind of like software that recognizes like an AI that recognizes the gait of someone and can like identify them based on their walk. I, uh, yeah, you should go call the Chinese. I'm sure they have yeah. some. <laughs> I know. They definitely like it. It was just like in a, I think it was mission impossible. Yeah. The newer ones, the one yeah. the newer one, it did, it talked about that. Yeah. Yeah. It, that's a, uh, that's pretty cool. That'd be like an interesting thing to just like sit and learn about because it's something that, Everybody does, but they don't realize. Mm-hmm. It. Yeah. So anyway, a personal story that I have is, I was uh, in Japan, and when I was doing my old job, uh, the the building that we were living in was like on the top of a hill, and from the balcony, the catwalk, you could like look down the hill, and you could see people walking back from the store for several hundred yards, and my buddy was on the catwalk smoking a cigarette, and he wasn't even like a close friend of mine. He was in a different. Uh, office i guess different work you know room and uh i'm walking back from the store one day and as when i get back to the to the building i walk up the stairs to the balcony my the dude that i knew he was like oh hey like i i knew it was you from like i could tell it was you from like way down (laughs) there he was like isn't it crazy like how close you get like when we work together and stuff Mm -hmm. like that i was like yeah you know that's pretty crazy yeah yeah so uh, that kind of stuck with me for a, a long time because uh it just shows you like how close you get to people that you work with, um, you know, kind of subconsciously mm-hmm. you see them every day. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could, uh, have someone put like a bag over their head and tell them to walk and probably like put on maybe like a suit or something that makes them look like a bigger statue person. Mm-hmm. But then you could still probably kind of figure it out, figure it out. That's them. Yeah. Just to, some people have walk. like really distinct, like swag Mm -hmm. you know yeah uh i think one of the biggest things is the arms Uh i think the arms is almost like the dead giveaway sometimes just Mm -hmm. like the because i i I, like even me i can look at myself when i'm walking like a reflection and i have uh like learned kind of like my own walk like Mm -hmm. I, i look at how my arms move and like my left arm moves different than my right arm in mm-hmm. fact like i've just mm-hmm. noticed that and if i can tell that then someone watching me would be able to tell that yeah yeah they would be able to tell even better yeah they're looking at me from a third person perspective you can uh, identify gender pretty easily too because yeah. uh males tend to sway from yeah. the shoulders yep and females are from the hips just yeah. naturally some girls have that crazy lady walk where it's really quick and like <laughs> yeah. like <laughs> if that person was walking tor- towards you you'd be like oh man i'm in trouble <laughs> yeah well their upper body is just like yeah. straight still with the, the legs yeah. where the males it's the total mm-hmm. opposite yeah yeah chin position is different your head position is different yeah just like you know it's a it's a it's a dude thing like we want to walk a certain way and look manly or look cool uh, or whatever uh well there is that sure but yeah. i think also like uh subconsciously it's like a like an anatomy thing like an yeah. anatomical thing mm-hmm. definitely Just with the bone legs. structure yeah yeah um i think the posture might have a good bit to do with like your your status and stuff too mm, the person yeah. with this you could probably do a study i'm, I'm sure the fbi loves using their body language analysis to mm-hmm. look at how ceo or some high up person walks and they definitely walk in a, in a different demeanor probably just sure. because of their Confidence. status yeah. yeah yeah um there's this book it's really popular you might have read it it's called uh what everybody is or everybody is yeah. saying yeah yeah i've read it joe navarro yeah mm-hmm. fbi guy yeah yeah that, that one's pretty that's pretty interesting yeah yeah he's Talk. got a couple like ted talk style things on youtube too i'm pretty sure oh really like uh like yeah. little speeches yeah conferences yeah. the uh I can't remember. He was like self, he called it like a pacifying. Pacifying thing. behavior? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And people like do it when do they're. Do a little one of these guys. Oh yeah. You can always tell when I'm one of these blind. guys. It's, yeah. I'm very like, I can't control my, 
movement. So I'm oh, a no? fucking horrible liar. <laughs> yes. It yeah. Yeah. It, it never works for me. <laughs> you know about the uh the vagus nerve? Vagus nerve? Yeah, the uh-uh. va- vagus nerve, vagus nerve. What's that one? Yeah, it's a it's a nerve in your throat. Oh. And that's when when people get nervous they they do this little yeah. little, little rub here cuz it it uh stimulates that nerve and it's like a calming it naturally yeah. calms you yeah 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 so and, you uh, see people like mess with their necklaces or guys will loosen up their tie or whatever or yeah. just do one of these yeah he talked about that he called it he called it something it started with an s and it was like you're something notch you're something another notch mm. and yeah he was talking about like people i don't know if i do that i might do it i don't it, uh, like well you'll do it subconsciously yeah more than likely <laughs> i probably do yeah. one thing i know i do is my eyes so I, you I blink always, a lot huh you blink a lot uh maybe or what you look, I, I don't look know, away or? yeah looking away is my thing uh, but i do it because uh it's easier for me to think yeah 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 it's well it's a natural thing too yeah yeah you, you get, gather your thoughts you're getting yeah. less like i uh, i i can't gather my thoughts going like this yeah right. just staring at you plus <laughs> yeah. it's kind of weird yeah because it's like you're you're processing something. right yeah yeah you can't if you look at or you can pull a lex friedman and do the the oh, eyes looking down i don't do that either mm. you ever you never notice that no he doesn't look at people either he's admitted it i haven't oh really yes i haven't watched too many of his podcasts i, I watch like one or two but not mm-hmm. i usually just listen to them yeah okay yeah but uh what was i gonna say yeah he's a, a he's a he's a look downer and <laughs> really he really thinks hard about and plus it might have to do with russian being i guess his first language hmm. but then again i mean he moved over here when he was younger so it's english is not the only, only language in his head so right. to speak so maybe it he's got to put a little, a little bit translate harder. yeah in there yeah. yeah i gotta is that the right word no that's the wrong word how do i say this mm. yeah so i think he he might he might be doing that but yeah he doesn't he doesn't uh look at people he's mm-hmm. like when he had whitney cummings on the Who's chick that? uh She's a comedian. Oh. Uh, she's decently intellectual. Okay. And he had her on, and he said that at the very like beginning that he doesn't... He always, like... He'll be talking, he'll just be, like, looking over here and kind of just, like, looking out. He do, he doesn't look at him. He, he said it. He said... um I can't remember the reason why he said he doesn't... He doesn't look people in the eyes when he's talking, really. Hmm. And he, like, admitted it. He's done it. He definitely did it on that one, but I think he did it on another show as mm. well. He might have did it with Rogan. I'm not too sure. Uh, I don't know. Maybe not in Russian culture. I'm not an expert on that, but I know culturally, looking at people in the eye is, in some places is like not okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Japan, I think, is one of them. Huh. I could be wrong about that. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Japan, they don't really like uh, direct eye contact too long. Uh, some other places for sure. Yeah. I can tell you one place that staring at someone for long amounts of time is completely okay. That's, Where? Uh, Bangladesh. Oh, really? Uh, man, oh, yeah. You had said that. I don't remember. even get me started on that, that shit. before. <laughs> I think, I th- well, I think that, do you think, is that like a Bangladeshi to a bl- Bangladeshi? Is that normal? Or is it just because you're a Westerner? Uh, um, so, staring period over there is normal. Okay. But, so someone else that has appeared on the show, the one or the person, mm-hmm. we uh, <laughs> uh, when we were over there, we would have just like bitch fits about the, the staring <laughs> together, yeah, and just venting towards each other. <laughs> but um, I, we I asked on multiple occasions, like our drivers, we're oh like, yeah, why like why do they why are they staring at us? And um, it basically came down to because over there in a less developed country, mm-hmm. um, you you have like a bunch of kids for starters, yeah. just how it works and then you want the success of your kids to be good like you want want your kids to succeed sure and um me being some white dude over there they automatically i think it's kind of like a universal thing in countries where white folks aren't common as they view them as you're automatically successful yeah Yeah, you're wealthy you got money you have a lot of success Mm -hmm. so in their mind why would you come to bangladesh (laughs) yeah (laughs) um Wow, certainly you must be here to bestow wealth and <laughs> greatness on everyone. Yeah, so in their eyes, they uh, one of the reasons that they stare at people, stare at some, someone that's different, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, you could be black, and that'd be yeah. different because they're, they're Indian-looking. Uh-huh. Um, 
but they South Asian. Yeah, <laughs> South Asian. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> they Indian as a Native American looking. They look Cherokee. Okay. <laughs> Let me uh, clarify. <laughs> um, but they see someone that might be able to afford their family, like something good. Uh-huh. So they like are looking and they hope that you would go up and speak to them. Mm. It's basically, but they won't approach you. They'll just stare at you. And, and they're, I, and I, I'm pretty sure somebody else explained it to me. So that's like one, that's a motivation behind them staring at you is they want you to basically help their family out which makes sense Mm -hmm. but another thing is um and it kind of it's kind of funny because it makes so much sense but we just don't think of it in this term or in in these terms is uh they see something like cool and so they just stare at it Hmm. which makes sense because like yeah you see a ferrari or something going on the road you stare at it yeah so to them it's nothing different yeah they see something cool so it's like Hmm. they stare at it and but if you were to be like do you have a fucking problem? <laughs> oh, we wanted to say that so many times. Yeah. Or like if you, something less me, if you're like, um, do you need something? Right. Like, why are you staring Can at I help me? You? <laughs> They'd be like, no, just, just looking. <laughs> but to us, obviously that's not okay <laughs> yeah, in yeah. our culture. Yeah. But to them, they're just, they see something like a, a beautiful lady. They're going to stare because yeah. it's something beautiful. So yeah, it makes sense to stare. I feel like life over there. Is so much slower paced, except when you're driving, obviously. Oh, so yeah. Driving is absurd. That's but <laughs> far from slow. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like I don't, they just like, they just move about life like slowly. They have the they have the time to just stare for a couple seconds. Yes. And we don't, you know. We would say very insulting things um, about that particular thing. I'd be like, <laughs> man, I was a fucking cruel person. Back then. <laughs> yeah, you said that's, that. That's what happens when you get put in a situation like that. Yeah, in a place like that from yeah. something you're not used to, away and, from everything you're used to for yeah. a long time. So I, I'm completely fine admitting now that yes, I was a fucking asshole. <laughs> so I won't defend myself. But sure. something that I used that's to good. say to to my buddies over there, mm-hmm. I'd always be like, imagine your life being so fucking boring, you just sit there and stare <laughs> at someone. <laughs> and we yeah. would just be so upset yeah. about being stared at and all that. But over there, they, they, uh, so like the less developed, you can tell you're in a good spot in a very developed, well-off place when, um, your problems that you have in your, your day are in the grand scheme nothing oh you oh facebook's down you can't log in oh the yeah. starbucks didn't have any sugar <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah you want to have those problems because when you have those um you you're doing pretty good yeah. so over there they like you can't have you're, you're less likely to have a small problem like that when your water doesn't even work so yeah. like you're thinking about that you don't have time you don't have the headspace to think about other stupid shit yeah so over there yeah it's like the big things like Food, shelter, yeah. family, it's, yeah. which is good. It's really good because mm-hmm. then, like, your life is fulfilled with good things. Necessities. There's a reason why they're ex- they're extremely happy over there. Right. It didn't make any sense. It's something I never understood. I was like, why are you guys so happy? Like, look at this place. You, this is this is happy. This is a happy place to be for you, mm-hmm. which it is for them, not for us. Well, they get us there. They're, it's. <laughs> It has to be fulfilling. I mean, the the way they earn what they have, you know, mm-hmm. I guess like they earn like every little bit. They have to work for everything. Yeah. Not that we don't hear, but it's like kind of a different standard, I guess. Yeah, they they work hard. Yeah, for just like, to get electricity in their yeah. house. You got to do, you know, a week's worth of work or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, they they worked yeah. like really hard this week. So their uh, boss was nice bread. enough to like have them over yeah. for dinner or something. Yeah. Yeah. And that's like a huge deal, right? Uh, and they also have that like uh, family, like family pride thing still over there. It's a little mm-hmm. bit more like tribal. Yeah, it's like it's like an honorable thing. Yep. Where it's like the talk of the town if you get like your kid went to a good school mm-hmm. or something like that, married like a legendary or something, married a wealthy lady. Yeah, like a wealthy family. That's a very yeah, yeah. big deal over there. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Trying mm-hmm. to get your son to uh, hopefully marry into a wealthy uh, family. I really, I feel like yeah. it would be the other way around. I mean, that's like a Western ideology of mine, I guess. Yeah. Like you try to get like the female married into the male thing. Yeah. 
Well, it's it, it might be both, but I'm just speaking from yeah. like one of our guys. He had like a bunch of sons. So I bet if he had a daughter, yeah, he'd say one of your same. locals. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, he had a bunch of sons. I always uh, hoped that his son would basically marry a sugar mama. <laughs> basically. <laughs> they have a fuck ton of kids over there, don't they? They have like big families, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Nah, most densely populated place. Yeah. In the city. I think it was a, yeah, I think it was 19 million. It, it was. Jesus uh, Christ, really? It was. I did the math. It was. The city is roughly the same size as Columbia, South Carolina. Okay. But it is 60 times the population density or uh, total. Yes. Oh, okay. So 60 Columbia's packed into the same area. I was like, what? That like put it in perspective. I was like, what? That is so many people. Yeah. It's mind boggling. Yeah. That, yeah. It's absurd. Yeah. Um, I got one. Uh, I got a staring story. It's not, not nothing great, but I was, uh, I was on the subway in Tokyo, which is like, uh, famously like jam-packed like yeah. i've ever seen pictures like they have like people like the the dudes like uh like the employees of the stuff they like literally like they're called i think they're called like pushers they like, push people into the fucking train uh-huh. it's crazy it's jam-packed like oh, you shit. can't even like move around most of the time huh. but uh yeah i was out in tokyo with my buddy and this this dude is like a fucking frankenstein looking motherfucker dude. <laughs> like shaved head like real like strong jawline <laughs> fucking packing a dip all the time like <laughs> Look, look, yeah. scary, yeah. <laughs> especially like in Japan, which is like a timid culture yeah. to begin with. Oh, yeah. So you have this like, and he's like kind of tall. He's a little bit taller than me. He's probably like five ten, five eleven, and uh, <laughs> this motherfucker. We were just sitting on the subway, and there, uh, uh, there was a girl. She's probably like seven or eight, and she, she was just staring at the at my buddy. Amazing. It was like I think it, it, it might have been the first time she ever saw a white person, mm-hmm. something like that. Uh, but she, yeah, she was just locked eyes locked on just staring at this at my buddy yeah oh man yeah she, and it wasn't like just like a casual stare it was like like a, <laughs> yeah, like, like a, what the fuck yeah, am i looking at yeah yeah for like the whole subway ride probably five ten minutes yeah <laughs> so that was, that was kind of funny yeah. but uh another thing with blinking kind of backtrack a little bit is uh okay. if you ever watched the bill clinton video where he um he says like i did not have yeah yeah whatever he he's blinking like absurd like I'm uh-huh. it's like it's crazy, yeah it's just a, it's a it's a stress reaction yeah there was something I I don't know if it was I think it was from that book it talked about that thing and he also oh no matter of fact it was a video I saw on YouTube and he was the way he, that same thing he was the i did not this this mm. this the pointing yeah he um i can't remember exactly what it was but i think it had something to do with his gesture didn't line up with his statements mm-hmm. like he like if you want to emphasize something you would say it i did not you know like the, it it would line up like the point mm-hmm. and the, the emphasis would line up in a certain way you speak if like you're being truthful but it was just like it was something about it. it might have been like the direction he was pointing to and it, it had something to do with his point right but um yeah they were talking about that and then something else people do i do it too it's like touching their hands like holding yeah. their own hand just making you feel like you, you i don't know just so it makes sense you right. want like it's a, a uh, feeling of touch comforting. what was the word that that i said last time pacifying pacifying behavior yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. that's mm-hmm. another one uh something else in that book I'm pretty sure it was that same one. Um, they were trying to, they were interrogating someone about something that happened. And the person, they didn't think the person was being truth, truthful. Mm-hmm. And what like sold it for them is they, so the book doesn't, it's not like how to catch a liar. He doesn't go off of that premise. He goes off of how to catch someone if they, if their behavior indicates that there's something more to the story, whether it's something covering up uh, their guilt or like some other thing mm-hmm. that he's gone off the premise that if their body language is this, then it's possible that there might be more information and their job is to catch, catch that and then dig yeah. basically We're being deceptive. Yeah. Um, but something about, they're like interrogating someone 
and then like they said that like yeah and then he went to the right but then the person pointed to the left they didn't mm. it's like why'd you point to the left like yeah if you were like yeah they went they went to the right down there you would like go point like to that the right. yeah. Yeah. yeah not point to the other way so they caught that and he was like they went back and they eventually he eventually confessed to doing something just because of that yeah because you're thing. lying faster than you can think yeah <laughs> <laughs> you're lying faster than you can formulate a logical story yeah yeah like, yeah, like lying on the spot <laughs> trying to put something together yeah you're obviously you're it's gonna have holes mm-hmm. yeah but the walking thing I, I just it was a very fascinating yeah. thought yeah we can get into uh consciousness okay um what was that the, one exactly uh so well we'll get into that but i'll, I'll the piece that will tie into the consciousness thing. So, uh, Marcus Luttrell on Joe Rogan, right? He's talking, and it was really funny is because Joe Rogan saw what I'm about to say. Saw this as a way bigger, more meaningful thing than Marcus did. Clearly, he like didn't care as much. Maybe he cared, but he just didn't show up. So, Marcus is telling his story about you know his one survivor thing, mm-hmm. and he gets to a part in the story when he's talking about uh because he like bit his tongue in half and then his mouth was like packed full of dirt Hmm. he could not he said he could like no matter how like how hard he tried he couldn't get all this dirt and shit out of his mouth (laughs) he was like drowning in dirt and mud basically Mm -hmm. because he would like try to drink water out of a river with all this dirt in his mouth he was just like swallowing mud Hmm. and that that part isn't in the Lone Survivor movie, and I don't think it is, um, that particular thing. Yeah. And Marcus had never told Joe Rogan about the whole dirt in the mouth thing ever prior to that. Mm-hmm. And when he said that, when he's telling that part of the story, Joe Rogan was like, you know what's so crazy is I had a, uh, I had a dream last night before I had you on um, of my mouth being filled with dirt and I kept trying to drink what? water and, and it, it he basically dreamed this exact thing yeah. and he woke up he say he vividly remembered and he said by the way he had never ever had a dream like this before about dirt being hmm. tossed in his mouth and all this other stuff that's crazy and he said he he remembered distinctly waking up the night before the interview and from the dream and just being like wow that was a crazy dream and he like he like got some water and then like went back to bed. Yeah, he probably didn't think anything of it. Yeah, outside but, of it being a weird dream. Yeah, just a know? weird dream. Didn't have any meaning at that context. time. Yeah, meaning connection. Yeah. And then when he started talking about that, he was just <laughs> like, like, "Jesus, hold Christ. up, <laughs> this is fucking crazy." And like he kept, um, but it was kind of upsetting because like he he would tell Marcus that, uh-huh. and like he wasn't Marcus wasn't like what. Oh wow, that's really interesting. You had a dream, but no, it wasn't nothing like that. He just was like, "Yeah," no. and then he would just like continue talking. And then, <laughs> but he would, Joe would basically like cut him off and be like, he wouldn't actually say this, but he'd be like, "Dude, do you not see how wild that is? Yeah, like, come on, talk to me about this. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's gotta be something. Yeah. This is a new topic, man. Put that to the side. We gotta talk about this. <laughs> and yeah, then what uh, Rogan starts saying is that, um he thinks that that's an example of like he, he well he told marcus that he believed that that was such like a like a powerful thing that's like happened on mm-hmm. this earth and that somehow that like crazy event was a living it comes to it gets into the living consciousness theory or idea and he was saying that that it's like that just came to him like literally it came to him because it's like a living thing it's like something in the air you like get these thoughts mm. in your in your head and then you have like a dream about it and he was like what like why would i have that dream the day before and he was like he said that he was like i i think you it's just something so powerful that you've experienced that somehow it ca- just came to me like it connected with me mm. to you and that I, is, uh... I was like wow that's it was so deep, but he just did not see it that way. It was so upsetting. It was like, dude, can you, like, this is a whole different, like, this is a 30 minute conversation. I want to go on Joe Rogan and I would, I'd be like, here, I'll talk to you about it. We'll <laughs> talk about it for an hour. I yeah. think it's great because I, I don't know too much about, I don't know enough to 
have like an interesting conversation about the consciousness yeah, I mean, the thing. I've heard something else too. It's like, um, like when people like just an idea comes to them. Mm-hmm. Um, I've, I think it was on Rogan as well. Um, that that is exactly what it is. That's not a figurative thing. Like an idea coming to you. It's it, an idea actually came to you because consciousness is like just around us in space. It's just this living thing. It's like, it is kind of interesting when like just an idea comes to you. Yeah. And it's like, I don't know, maybe, maybe Elon, like through all of his inventing processes, like an idea just came to him, but it's like, where'd that idea come from? Like why, if, if an idea comes to you and it's super crazy, it, it's super crazy to you because you didn't even like have any prior like thoughts really i guess of this idea of such such a monumental thing that it was like whoa i got it and then you got to write it down so because you don't want to forget it it's like Mm. where did that come from you know ah yeah but you think you think it's like an external thing like it just it just Um, came to your brain i don't know but that's what people think some people think that and Ah. it's it's pretty interesting it's it's a that's that's when you start getting into uh like this oh this bigger thing oh yeah yeah like <laughs> uh Philosophical. marcus is re- pretty religious so he, yeah he said it was it was god mm-hmm. which I don't know, maybe it sure. is nobody knows yeah um so or you could also get into the simulation theory <laughs> what, what, what is that i don't know just if basically if uh if you think god did it it's like no nah, it was a simulation that was in simulation. the simulation I almost say it in a more joking way, but I do like the simulation theory a lot. I'm not familiar with the, that. The with. simulation theory? Yeah. Oh, really? No. Nope. Um, so there's this uh, Mark Bostrom. There you go. He's a Swedish man. He came up with the simulation theory. Okay. Um, and not recently, like in the early 2000s, before this hmm. was like too much of a, a big thing. I guess internet was coming around, so he came up with this idea. Mm-hmm. And... Um, he's been on Joe Rogan and with uh, Lex Friedman on their shows, but the the simulation theory is what it sounds like. It's it's the idea that a, another intelligent civilization or yeah, what have you, mm-hmm. um, created a and I can get into this more and about how the like religion versus simulation theory thing is, but a more advanced civiliz- got a uh, civilization got so advanced that it created a simulation. Here we are living in it. Oh man, uh, so, I can't believe you never heard that. No, oh, it's such a. I, 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 was I have bigger. two great pop culture references though. You, you ever watch Rick and Morty? Uh, it's like uh, the multiverse Rick and Morty thing. Hey, you're good. Yeah. No, nah, I, I I've never watched Rick and Morty. It's a ridiculous show. You yeah. shouldn't waste your time, but it's <laughs> kind of funny. Uh, you just pissed off three million people. Why? <laughs> because you you just said bad things about rick and morty the show <laughs> it's, it's a good show it's, it's not a waste of time oh it's a huge waste of time but it's <laughs> it's good entertainment yeah potentially if you're drunk it's pretty good yeah <laughs> uh what uh yeah there's an episode it's like the the multiverse and it's basically like a it it plays on the whole simulation theory idea mm-hmm. and also have you seen the show westworld oh it's a show time. yes i do i it's do exactly love what westworld. you're saying it's like a yeah yeah, it's it's like well, it's not necessarily exactly what you're saying, but it's like a it's like a virtual reality, not even virtual. It's like a real reality like yeah. theme park. I want to say with. something about particularly Westworld. We'll yeah, get into that. Oh, go ahead. No, I, that was pretty much all I had. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I think first off, I love the intro to that show, Westworld. Yeah, like a lot of shows, you just skip the intro. I would watch it every time. I wouldn't <laughs> skip past it. It's just like captivating to me. It's showing like the music, the piano, and it's like yeah. creating this machine. Oh yes, the yes. android. Yes. I, I could watch an episode back to back, and I, I wouldn't be like, "Nah, I already saw the intro. Skip it. Let's get to it." I'd be like, "No, don't fucking touch that. I want to watch the intro again." Yeah. Now that you mention it, it is a good intro. <laughs> it's very captivating. It's yeah. just something about it. I really like the any type of like that mechanical style kind of thing. Yeah. Like. Yeah, very like um, it's like just steampunk, this in- industrial, yeah, looking industrial thing. steampunk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I thought that sh- there's a scene in that show. I can't remember which episode it is. 
not too far into it. But um, there's a, a a scene in that show, and it's at the part of the show when the the one the one black character, that chick, she's starting to come, she's uh, becoming self aware. Oh yes. Yeah, she starts like noticing things, and then she eventually makes it into the place where they work on them, and she was like not in sleep mode basically. Yeah. Yeah, and um, there's a scene of her uh, holding the tablet that shows, like, the script, Mm -hmm. the actual speaking script that is being (laughs) run through them. Yeah. And then she sees it in front of her, and she's she can't, like, she's basically reading reading along with it. Right. But she's not reading it. She's being programmed to say that, and she's looking at what she's saying. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And she's, like, trying to fight it and go, like, not say Off that script <laughs> yeah, yeah and it just didn't work and i think she like glitches and then like goes to sleep or something yeah. but i was like that that's so it's such an interesting idea it seemed like this thing trying to become self-aware yeah but it can't quite get there mm-hmm. and it, it just can't understand that it's uh um and honestly you could tie that exact thing into like simulation theory like you think you have free will but uh, you're actually running on it's a, a game yeah, yeah you're a truman show um <laughs> yeah and so like to her it's like Wait, what? Uh, what is all this? Wait, why am I reading along to it? Uh, I don't. Uh, I can't fight it. And then you can't. Yeah. Just, there's no free will there. I never got like too deep into the show. I, I watched uh, probably four or five episodes. It, it's a good show though. Oh yeah, it is. Um, I really liked it. Yeah. Especially that simp in there. That one fucking simp to the the uh, Delorius, the blonde girl. <sighs> mm, it's it's been a while. Yeah. I, I used to always make remember. fun of that dude. I was like, this guy is the simp the ultimate simp <laughs> if you like want to just look it's up like what that is beta. that character that well it's not even the uh, android it's an actual person uh-huh. it's basically in love with this robot <laughs> but um yeah so the, the simulation thing is uh if, if you want to talk about like consciousness um i guess that's not it's it, it's not a living thing and it's not like this thing that we don't know about it's something that's just in this coded into the simulation like yeah a thought came to you because it was like <laughs> drag and drop drag the file over and drop it into his head <laughs> there there's your idea that just came to you yeah it's and, all in fact yeah, yeah in fact it, it just come to you directed um there's this uh dare watch the reddit videos where people like big it's very popular like a ton of channels do it like ask reddit or uh oh ask me anything yeah AMA. yeah yeah basically r slash ask reddit and then it's yeah like, yeah, yeah there's an endless supply of topics mm-hmm. and they it has like this text-to-speech narrator voice that mm-hmm. sounds really good that just reads the stories off hmm. and but there's this really popular series called uh um people who've experienced the glitch in the matrix like in quotes <laughs> right uh tell their story or whatever and yeah there's a, a lot of stories of people like just weird like basically an anom- anomaly in like real life that, that like uh i think for example quite a few of them uh, people will tell like a story that uh they're like doing something one day and like on a they uh they'll say they're going to put a clothespin on a bag of chips but in in the process they drop the clothespin and they could never find it like it just disappeared like they'll be looking like They'll, like, rip their whole house apart, like, <laughs> looking under the couch, looking yeah. under the bed, places where it couldn't even go, and it was, and it just vanished. Mm. Like, just gone. Didn't even, doesn't, it's not even explainable. And so, th- they're like, no, that was a glitch in the Matrix. Mm-hmm. And I actually have, um, I, I have, like, so, I have this um, logbook that I write things down in. It, I literally wrote, write down things, um that blew my mind Mm. stuff that just like because uh the way i am is i'm uh i don't just see things and that are like really like just mind-blowing to me and i don't like dwell on it like i i dwell on a lot of things Mm -hmm. that are like like i don't know i see something really cool in the technology world out and it like blows my mind i really like dwell on that stuff i don't just say whoa that's wild and then just move on no i i think about things and then um, I'm, I'm a person who believes in, like, everything can be explained. So when something unexplainable happens, oh, it really fucks me up. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, just, it just really bothers me. 
Mm. Um, so yeah, I, I kind of have like a, a glitch in the matrix story um, that I actually wrote down in my book. But I was coming back from Lisbon. I was at the uh, yeah, I was at the Lisbon airport, and I remember I was uh, yeah, I wasn't drunk. I wasn't like hungover, or low on sleep. I was in my right mind, mm-hmm. um, and I was walking to my gate, following the arrows, and um, the arrows. I'm trying to remember this correctly. The arrows were like pointing one direction and I was following them and I like looked up and then they were pointing the opposite way and I was like oh I must have walked past it or something and then I turned around naturally to walk back Mm -hmm. to go to my exit but then I like got back to where I started and my gate was there and the arrows like all of them were pointing the other way and I was like what I, I, it made no sense to me. And I was like, I thought about the whole damn plane ride back. And I was just like trying to explain. I was like, did I, like, it doesn't make any sense. And th- it was a really interesting trip. Cause something else, this is my most favorite story to tell about like, it's not really a simulation theory or a glitch in the matrix. It's just like one of those one in one in a billion. Hmm. So um, when I was in uh, DACA still, I went to Singapore uh, oh, yeah? just, just for a few days on vacation. This was uh, f- February 2019. Okay. Went to Singapore a uh, few days on vacation. Met a girl there. Hanging out, I was hanging out with her. And then, yep. So I left, came back to Dhaka. And then from Dhaka, I went to the Netherlands. All right. So I'm no longer in that side of the world at all. Right. Um. In October of, yeah, October of 2019. Yeah. yeah. So several months later, mm-hmm. I'm on that side of the world now. I yep. go to Lisbon. Um, I'm hanging out with a girl there as well. I went to dinner with her and her college friends. And like we were, we were at, you know, some Korean barbecue place. Korean restaurant mm-hmm. and I like take a picture with all of them sure and then I put it on my Instagram and I like I, I tag them on my story okay the next day uh the girl from Singapore messages me and mm-hmm. she goes uh who's that girl you're with and like we no I wasn't a thing with this girl so I thought that she was like Who, who's that like being jealous or something mm-hmm. so I was like uh, it's no one. It's just like a friend. And she goes, no, no, no. I know her. And I was like, you know her? I was like, this random person? I was like, you know her? And so I asked her, the girl, the the, the one in Portugal. I was still there. Yeah. I was like, D- do you know her? And she was like, oh, yeah, I know her. Um, I, like, basically what it came down to is they, uh, like, dated the same dude. They... Th- this dude that both of them dated yep. was from France. Okay. And she, like, the the girl, girl in Portugal went to France at some point to study. And the same with the Singaporean girl. She went to France as well to study. And they somehow met the same dude. <laughs> Small world. So I was like, so you know her? And she's like, yeah. And I was thinking, I was like, you wow. You fucking kidding me. What are the odds? <laughs> that yeah. is like... And I, and, Kind of like the Marcus Luttrell situation with Joe Rogan. She did not see how I saw Oh, she did. No, she's not like, wow. Yeah, I know her. Whoa, what are the odds? <laughs> and once again, like, I was like, I couldn't think about anything Are you anything kidding else. me? <laughs> I was like, so this is a, in essence what happened. Yeah. Like, if I went to, that's like me going to any country, insert whatever country here. Mm-hmm. Pick two countries, particularly ones across the world, because it makes the scenario even better. Sure. I go to Australia. I find a random person. Just I pick one out. You in the crowd. <laughs> Get over it. Yeah. I go over to them. I say, all right, I'm going to go to Spain in six months. I'm going to find one of your friends. Bet you I can. <laughs> and then I go to Spain. Hey. You, come here. Hey, you know, this you guy? know him? <laughs> yeah, I know him. 
fucking knew it. That's what happened. That's and I was absurd. like, dude, that is crazy. The odds <laughs> that is great. Not existent. That, no odds. Uh, you can't measure that. Yeah, it's so <laughs> it's so slim. <laughs> what is that? Uh, what's that? What's the uh, bull? Uh, uh, Boolean? No. Uh, what's the? What's like the max number? Oh. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I think it is Boolean. Yeah, it's like Boolean, like a Boolean cube type thing. Yeah. That's what it sounds like. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. But <laughs> the, the odds are, odds you can't are measure that. Just non-existent. <laughs> yeah. That, that like, uh, that's one of those things that happens, like some things happen in my life. That's one of them that just like maybe changed my perspective <laughs> on things like what? We are all connected. Oh, man. Just, that, that's crazy. It was, was so, story. so wild. Yeah, do you guys, has anything like that ever happened to you? Like any kind of crazy, oh, the odds? I love uh, stories like that. Not, not, no. I will say that I've like dreamt the future like a couple of times. And it's Ooh. like actually on multiple occasions. That's a good one. And it's like the stupidest thing. So you dream things that end up happening? Yeah. Oh my. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it's like the dumbest things. Like, like, like what? Oh, uh, I forgot to put my watch on today, but I dreamt that like four months ago <laughs> huh. yeah I, it's i don't know it's it like the stupidest things i can't i really can't even it hasn't happened in a while yeah but uh hmm i like uh yeah I don't, it's just like random everyday things that typically like would more than likely happen anyway i've had dreams about them before like mm -hmm. many weeks in advance and then when they happen, I, like, remember that dream. And I don't really dream very often either. It's, like, fairly rare. That, well, I dream. Every, everybody dreams yeah. all the time. But it's rare, that I yeah, it's rare that I remember my dreams, typically. So when one of these, like, small little, like, random detail things happen, it's like I dreamt this, like, mm -hmm. three months ago. It's kind of <laughs> scary almost. Yeah, it's weird. weird. Yeah, there you uh, go. There's a simulation theory. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the they're, they're uh, I'm downloading I'm yeah. downloading the files. <laughs> yeah, it just it just yeah. took a while. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think uh, maybe maybe like your file that was gonna happen in the future, it got it got mixed up and you got it a little sooner than you're supposed to. <laughs> yeah, in the form of a dream. <laughs> yeah, uh, Matthew Walker I think talks about the sleep dude. He talks about mm -hmm. um, like that like we don't know why we dream. It doesn't make sense for us to dream because. Mm -hmm. uh, he he broke it down and like back in the past when like energy and just like food survival was like a big deal it would make no sense to dream because it's something that uh makes you burn calories in your sleep it's mm. a energy sink like so why would you, why would you why would we uh evolution put this thing in our things that we or in our brain that we can't control and it's just like this heat sink it just burns calories when you don't need to yeah I, well, I think it's uh, I think there's like psychological and like emotional uh, advantages to dreaming. Mm -hmm. I think I think it rebalances like your psyche and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's definitely good for creativity. Yeah, or the that amount, the amount of cre but I don't know. Maybe they in the past they dreamed about creating f a fire or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's just weird. It doesn't make any like yeah. now because you can only dream about what you know right uh -huh. i mean or it, or i mean you can only dream about what you can imagine right mm -hmm. i mean right I mean, like that you can't you're not gonna you know invent the wheel in your dream right or like can like uh eh, can you can you dream about something that doesn't exist like uh i don't know because if you can so dream it, about it you have to know about it yeah it's like you don't Faces in your dream aren't made up. Yeah, faces. it's somebody that you've seen at yeah, some point in your apparently life. Your brain can't make up that stuff. Yeah, I see what you're saying, but it's like so uh, how if, I feel like the world when we were living in caves was a far less creative place because like now we got all this shit. I mean, you got you can right. you're a, a musician and you dream about this guitar note, or you're an artist and you dream about this painting that you right. paint. Um, I don't know how much like create. I, I don't know what they were doing back then. They were just looking for food. Yeah. <laughs> they were just trying to stay alive. Right. So dreaming and, like, it's inspiring them to, like, look for food better or something. It doesn't make as much. It seems like dreaming was kind of just like the world was kind of boring back then. You, you weren't making and creating. Man, was it boring? Huh? 
I, I, I don't know if it, I don't know if I would call it. Boredom. Oh, in our perspective, yeah, eh. you don't do nothing but sleep and look for food and fight off tigers. It was definitely more exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds exciting. Yeah. Right? yeah, but boring in the sense of like cr- creating things. It's very like basic. Yeah, you're just primitive. Not doing primitive, too much. Yeah. So there, it was like, all right, what's gonna kill me today? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like nonstop like war yeah you know? war with life it's definitely more exciting <laughs> war definitely. with nature you definitely had a lot Constant more to, combat with your a lot more to think about yeah, but you think about how easy it is to you know easy it was to die back then mm-hmm. what was the life expectancy like 30 you know oh, it couldn't have been <laughs> that like, high fucking oh you don't think you think it was lower uh i think it was 20s had to have been 20s yeah jesus christ wow yeah because you imagine it, that if yeah fucking and, and we're the, on our last leg right now in the modern world, um, compared to that, I mean, it wasn't modern in our perspective. We're talking like 18, early 1900s. The life expectancy for countries back then was in the 30s. Was it really? Uh, for some countries. Oh, okay. But look, it was definitely better to live there in the 1910s than way back in the day. So if it yeah. was like 30 for them and... Well, yeah, it had to have been lower. It had to have been like nothing. <laughs> way lower. Like nobody... Just, you you grew up, you reproduced, and then you just hopefully you made another few years. That's so short. Mm-hmm. Fifteen, oh, fourteen. Yeah. It's like we're not designed to live this long. You're it's like, like barely like, developed by that point. You're yeah. barely like hitting puberty. Four, fifteen, thirteen, whatever, yeah. thirteen. They 14. would crank out some kids, and then <laughs> yeah. they would get schwack. Probably. Jesus and, Christ! You don't eat, well if it, well if that well holy shit, dude! If that's the case. By the time you're having kids, you're getting ready to die. That means you can't raise the kids. <laughs> then yeah. what? That, that, doesn't, uh, that doesn't make sense. It's a sad, grim place. I mean, you're basically a dog. Like a dog <laughs> lives like... You could probably have like a pet dog and it would outlive you. <laughs> <laughs> because it, it lives yeah. for like 16 years as a really old dog, but then you die. You get killed. Uh, this is totally off topic, but I, I saw a... Uh, so talking about sad place and kids. And uh, I saw a video. They got it was a it was like a thermal a, a FLIR video mm-hmm. out of the border. It was like oh. these two coyotes. There, or it was one guy on top of the fence. He had another guy on the other side of the border. But he fucking that fence is probably yeah, it's probably 15, tall. 15 feet tall. Yeah, yeah. You just and these kids they they were maybe two and a half three feet tall. They were pretty small kids. He just fucking dropped them from the top of the wall and then Man. jumped back over. How'd they land? Away. They land on their feet? Oh, they landed flat on their ass. Oh, nice. It looked, it looked pretty painful. <laughs> Did they get up? Oh, wait, uh, no. Uh, the one kid was, like, stunned for 20 to 30 seconds, and uh-huh. then he kind of started rolling around, stood up. Well, then uh, the, uh, our customs guys went and got him, right? Uh, the stashed. video cuts out, so uh, I don't know. Because I, I saw the... I would hope so. <laughs> I saw that video. Yeah, I guess I mean, they were watching them. Yeah. <laughs> they were recording some, Yeah. Because <laughs> I, I saw that title of that video. I didn't, I didn't watch the video, but I saw it going around. Uh-huh. And it, it, I think it said, like, video captures Coyote doing that with kids before our people go and get them. Mm-hmm. So, which we definitely do. We're not going to record them. No, just leave them. <laughs> yeah, and be like, all right, well, I hope they figure it out. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're going to go get them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude. Oh. Um. But uh, something else, something else that was brought up to us by uh, a prior guest on this show, mm-hmm. the the idea. Uh, well, it's not really an idea. What do you do when someone's telling you something you already know about? Oh, do you let them continue, or do you just cut them off and say, "Hey, listen, you jackass, I already know." No, yeah, I, I well, I, mm, I think it's like contextual, maybe. But I would, I would venture, I would err to say that. Uh, let them go on just so I can hear about what they have to say. Yeah. So I can 100%. agree or disagree. More yeah. than likely disagree. Like I was saying, I, I, I immediately was thinking of your buddy telling you the story for the 10th time. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Not like you run into a random guy on the street and he wants to tell you about this topic that you also know good a bit about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would no, never cut him off. Right. He's, it's so like you're you're saying you think in the context of you're hearing the same story again. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I well, then, yeah. Then I'd be that. like, <laughs> like yeah, yeah. I remember you, you just told me about it. Yeah, yeah. That <laughs> yeah, was he easy. told me. I get it. Yeah, yeah. I do that uh, kind of often. I just 
be like, yeah, 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 you told me about that. Because it's, it's awkward to just hear him. So, but something I have done. That's a waste of time, too. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Something that I have done before is I will let someone retell, like, not not uh, them sharing info on a topic, them telling a story. I will let them tell it again to see if they change it. Oh, <laughs> uh, I do. I do. That's what you're yeah. going to say. That's funny. <laughs> this, that's fucking psychological warfare. Right that is. There. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's like, funny. And, matter of fact. I my, love people that do that. Oh, man. Uh, I, love people, I love the compulsive liar people. Mm, They're just so pathetic. The, the best is when they told you the story when it was just you two, uh-huh. and then they retell the story in front of a group. <laughs> it's and totally the chances different. of that story <laughs> changing. exactly the same. Yeah, yeah it's going to be a lot higher. <laughs> yeah. But I'll also, um, this has also happened to me. I'll tell someone something. Like, I'll, I'll tell them, like, a, a fact or something, just something interesting. And then... Uh, they will forget that I'm the one that told them that this particular <laughs> interesting fun fact, whatever it is, and they'll be talking to their friends. I'll be present, and they'll tell it like they, this is their original thought. <laughs> and I'm thinking, yeah, that's a fucking good thought you had there. <laughs> where you got that? Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the uh, I'm, I feel like everybody's probably guilty of that at some point, though. Yeah, I feel like I've probably done that. Yeah, I don't know. I at least put that disclaimer, like, yeah, I heard. Even if I can't remember. I don't know if I would, like, intentionally do it. But, like, you know, obviously everybody mm-hmm. repeats things that other people tell them. Yeah, yeah. You know? that's, that's the... Spread the knowledge. I have the problem with they, they're, like, s- saying it like <laughs> this is their area of expertise <laughs> yeah. and they came up with this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, well yeah, I have a problem with that. Yeah. Too. But the letting It's like people... plagiarism of thought. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let people tell the same story two times and see if it changes. It's <laughs> also very fun to do. Yeah. Yeah. Try it sometimes, folks. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. But I'm I'm pretty good about not retelling stories. I can usually recall who I tell the story to and uh-huh. I won't say it again. Mm. Or I'll ask them. Oh. Uh, well, you want to talk about the sketchy bar story? Is that what you're going to say? Um, Probably not. No, nah, I'll tell you offline. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, yeah, I'll tell you about that. But. Yeah, you shouldn't. That's like Lex Friedman, for example. Uh, he doesn't come off as a jujitsu black belt. No, it's not like at all. Somebody, if someone came up to him and started talking about ju- jujitsu, he wouldn't be like, "I'm a fucking black belt." I know. <laughs> he would no way would ever do that. It's like, right. A lot of humility. Humility when it comes to cutting people off. Yeah. Like, wait, you don't want to cut. They, there's a chance they're going to know something that you don't. So. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So. To answer that one, in both cases, just let him go. Let him continue, even right. especially with this, with this story, because that'll be kind of funny. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I I feel I interrupt people sometimes more often than I should. I feel like I'm I get I get really engaged in conversation mm-hmm. sometimes. I'm like I just I can't wait to talk to you about what I have to say. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know, but yeah, no. I try active listening is is definitely a good skill. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's it's Take hard. It it's hard to because. Uh, it, I think what it, it, unless it's in a conversation in this setting mm-hmm. where you know that because I think the fear that people have and the reason why they interrupt and I mean I do it too more so in not in settings like this so like we're hanging out at work or in the break room or Whatever. at a bar yeah. you're afraid the conversation is going to run away before you get what, your input yeah. yeah and what when it when it's finally your turn to speak, it it's kind of like irrelevant. It's yeah. like, dude, you're bringing that up. It's just um, <laughs> done talking about that. I'm talking about this now. Yeah. But in this situation, it's like, you don't have that anxiety really. Cause mm-hmm. it's like, well, well, I'll just back step. I mean, you did it earlier. Just we'll backtrack and then we'll get to it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my dad does it too. Cause he, he thinks he's going to forget. Mm-hmm. So he, he doesn't really interrupt me anymore. He, j- he just goes, remind me to tell you about this. And then, so I remember right. to bring it up. So he can remember to tell me. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's yeah. Interesting. Interrupting is uh, some people that just do it like all the time though, and like they just don't give a fuck about what you have to say. Yeah. Uh, me and me and the other guest, we were uh, talking about it on, I think maybe the fifth one. The topic we were talking about was dealing with people who overspeak you mm-hmm. in conversation. Yeah. Very and annoying. my reasoning behind it was um, unless it's something that's like super important and everybody needs to hear it, um, then I wouldn't go on to do what 
I'm going to talk about. But if it's just like any other conversation and someone's just cutting you off, I'll be like, oh, fuck it. I guess they don't want to, they don't want to hear what I have to say. And then if they don't, then so what? I'm not going to try to, no, 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 no I'm going to talk louder now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm gaining the ground. Yeah. I don't have to gain the higher ground. If you don't want to hear me, I don't want to hear you. Yeah. And when, when you start getting defensive like that, mm-hmm. it's like, it, it's the same concept as if someone tells like a, a make, like picks fun at you and you get defensive. I'm not small, man. Yeah. I'm big. It, it just like, it gives and empowers the person. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's like, see, look, guys, he's getting mad. Oh, he's getting defensive. Yeah. And if, if you do that same thing, that, that's basically the same thing as if, when someone's talking and then like, you're no, like, no, no, you're trying to, I, I want to talk louder. You're getting like defensive mm-hmm. and you're, you are letting them control your conversation. If you're just like, whatever, then you're in control. Yeah. Like you're, you're in control of your own conversation. Yeah. Like you're trying to be assertive, but it's actually like counterproductive. It doesn't come off. Uh huh. Yeah, like you think you're trying to be assertive by talking over people, but mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, you look silly. Yeah, trying to do that. It uh, you it comes up. You can pick up on it if you watch like a like a three way podcast mm-hmm. or stuff like that, where like the one guest is trying to talk over other. Like I was, I watched the the Joe Rogan with the song Sager and Jetty, and the girl that he hosts with. Do you mm-hmm. do you know about that 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 guy? No. Sagar Sagar and Jetty's a DC uh, political correspondent. Oh wait, yes, I I saw these. Yeah, yeah, and he does like a YouTube news kind of show. It's like it's like apolitical. It's not really. Uh, well, actually, it's uh, it so Sagar is like a cons- conservative leaning guy, and then the co-host uh, her name's like Crystal or something. She's like you know left lefty left wing mm-hmm. uh, left leaning. So it's you know it's pretty balanced as far as like uh, the spectrum goes, but uh, anyway, the 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 two of them they co-host the new show on YouTube, uh, The Hill, and they were on Joe Rogan, and the girl Crystal was trying to get you know her input into the conversation, and like they were Joe and Sager were already talking, and she just kept getting louder and louder and louder, saying the same mm-hmm. fucking thing. It was really annoying. Hmm. So you can you pick up on it sometimes when yeah. people try and do it. Yeah, yeah. I don't like his uh his three way podcast too much. They usually uh, yeah. never. Oh, and then when he has four people on, oh, four people crazy. total, it's like okay, I'm just a bunch of drunk just dumbasses. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just yeah, bickering. <laughs> like when he had um, this guy caught got so much hate too. So when he had uh you know Bob Lazar on. Or, oh, Bob Lazar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Element Fifty One or whatever the hell he's. Playing. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, 151 El- or something. Elmet, yeah, 115. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he would always bring Jeremy Corbell on. The, the, Who's that? The people in the comment section refer to him as the tat- uh, tatted barber guy. Because <laughs> he's, uh, so Jeremy Corbell is like, he's he's a investigator basically. Oh, okay. And in his defense, yeah, he should have came on the show because when he had Bob was on, because he, he came, he usually comes on with the UFO people. Um, um, or the, the uh, Jeremy. Jeremy, yeah. yeah. So Bob Lazar is, you know, obviously the... The he's, UFO he's like, guy. Yeah. Huh? The UFO guy. Yeah, he's he's the UFO guy. I can talk about him, too. <laughs> um, he has... has uh, the documentary that Jeremy basically put together is about him. It's on Netflix, I guess, still. So, yeah, he came onto the show because, like, yeah, we're, like, we did a documentary, so I'm going to come along. But right. Jeremy is just like, he's he's not like the, the first, first-hand first account dude. That's Bob. That's Bob's story. Right. So he would he would bring him on, and he did compliment the conversation f- for the most part. Mm-hmm. But you could just tell Joe was like, didn't want to like talk to him. Because he to would. Jeremy. Yeah, he'd, he'd be like, he'd start talking. But like Bob was already like going deep into something. And then he would start talking. You just tell that he just like didn't want to hear. He's like, yeah, 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 okay, yeah. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Bob was talking. Let, just, just stay there and don't say anything. And people in the comments section were like roasting this guy. They're like, let have Bob Lazar on and just Bob Lazar. Don't bring Jeremy along. And then he had David Fravor on the F eighteen pilot. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Guess who came along with him? Him. Jeremy. Uh, somebody in the comments. I'll never forget this. Uh, somebody in the comments was like. 
Jeremy is the type of guy that would introduce one of his friends to another friend of his and then get mad because he would become better friends with him. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said something like that. I was like, oh, that's pretty funny. It's like, dude, th- 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 just uh, don't come on the show. Like, I'm yeah. surprised he didn't come on when um, Trevor, uh, I can't remember his name, uh, the dude and his story is a little bit more, I'm not, he's the alien abduction dude. Oh, uh, yeah. I didn't listen to that one. Yeah. He, that that was a great example of a guy who needs to work on his like storytelling skills. Oh really? They he had like this great story and it was just like him telling it. I was like, one, it wasn't too captivating, and two, it's like ah, it's not as believable. Like Bob, I a hundred percent believe that dude. Hmm. I really do. And it's kind of annoying. Didn't they like raid his warehouse or something? Yeah, they uh, because he he has like a chemistry lab. Yeah. The lab, yeah, that's what yeah, I mean. the lab. They raided had, the lab. <laughs> yeah, they thought that he had um, some of that element. Yeah, I think he did actually. Uh-huh. And yeah, they fucking raided him. Yeah, it's like <laughs> he's just sitting there working. He's like, "God damn it, not There's again!" A... <sighs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, but um, so it's annoying because uh, I feel like a lot of people want to like they want to believe that there's stuff out there. Or there's yeah other things. Mm-hmm. So. They, they're on that side of the, the spectrum. They're not the complete deniers where it's like, no, nah, we're the only things out here and there's nothing. End of story, period. So when you have the people that want to believe, right. and then you get a guy like Bob on, or Bob coming to the world. He's a full and they believer, right? still want to be like, no, uh-uh. I'm like, what is it going to take? Yeah. You, like, gotta... you know, this is the best example. What a right. very consistent individual who doesn't even have that crazy of a story mm-hmm. um, in terms of like it would go in a, a sci-fi movie. Like the Trevor dude has that kind of story. Yeah. He got abducted and he was gone for like three days, <laughs> like which is fucking wild. But that story should be more interesting to people, but I don't think it is. I think people like Bob more. Which, yeah. Well, it's, it's more, it's less believable. Huh? Yeah. I mean, you're talking about he was gone for three days Yeah, to where, he doesn't know. I don't know. He was abducted. Yeah, that's exactly. the story. So when you hear that, you like your initial thing is like, like you roll your eyes. Nah, all right, yeah. <laughs> but Bob, his story is like yeah, it's more believable. Yeah, he's just talking about some space age technology that we had no clue. Yeah, like how the hell this thing, and he had the his, he was tasked with reverse engineering in it. Mm-hmm. So all he was talking about was that's why I like his story more because I yeah, I'm, it's believable. Yeah, I'm more into the tech of yeah the tech of all this stuff, mm-hmm. not the. I'm into the life and all that, like life being uh, somewhere else. But sure. when you have a dude that is, I completely believe him talking about working on this. Um, it was a reactor that didn't like just didn't make any sense. Like it didn't have any wiring or anything. And you bring this element over to it and it powers it on hmm. and all this other weird stuff. And he talked about going inside the actual craft. Hmm. Yeah. When you uh, get a guy talking like that. And there was more, too, that he told Joe Rogan, but he uh, wouldn't talk about it on the show. Oh, really? Yeah. It was about uh, weaponry, hmm. he said. and Because uh, one one other episode, he was like, yeah, Bob uh, told me about like weaponry at uh, dinner one time, but I promise I would never say it, so I can't say anything more about it. Wasn't uh, – it's been in the news, like, recently. Is it, wasn't it somehow attached to, like, the stimulus bills? Yeah. About the release, yeah, or like the declassification of some things about with uh, what's that pilot's name? Um, Fravor. Fr- uh, David, yeah, David Fravor. Right? Yeah. So yeah, well, they're trying to release like that footage, which that was released a while ago. But yeah, uh, the details and reports about that whole thing wasn't it, like wasn't it like attached to the, the stimulus bill? Yeah, or something like that. <laughs> so <laughs> something it was crazy. Some yeah, what you're saying, some COVID thing. Yeah. Um, and it was like require. I guess the government yeah. to release all known information within 180 days mm-hmm. of the passing of this bill. Mm-hmm. And I don't think anything's going to really become of it. Yeah. Yeah. Joe, it's all tied up. Yeah. Joe was even saying that they're just going to like, yeah, you think they're just going to, it's not going to, all right, happen. tell them everything. <laughs> tell the whole public everything. Yeah. You, no, you want like mass chaos? Yeah. Just do it's that. not going to happen. Um, so he was, he was even saying, he was like, yeah, they're going to get a little bit and be like, all right, here you go. Shut the fuck up and then leave us alone. But, um, 
there was another story uh, going around. I'll have to look it up. I can't remember the exact details, but there was um, these F-18 pilots uh, more recently. Um, I think it was uh, forward of 2015. It was like that recent. They uh, apparently saw something like a craft and took pictures of it on their iPhones. Hmm. And uh, the pictures are being held and oh, yeah. they're not being released. And there was a news story going around and people were like, obviously like, no, let us see them. Like we need to see this stuff yeah. needs to be known. So, but when you, well, that's interesting because they, if they took them on their iPhone, it's a personal photo. Yeah. Well, they probably was like, give me that. Yeah. You don't know. Yeah. They just that's interesting. took hold of it. That's kind of bullshit. Cause it's like, well, so what it's, I could see if it was like, like you should want that should be more releasable because it's not being recorded on a imaging thing on the plane, and they don't have to like black everything out and all that. It's not like sensitive. Yeah. So you're just like, yeah, release the pictures. Yeah. Like just because a military pilot took it, it's not it's not the property of the government. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Just like yeah. we need to see this stuff. It's no different than if someone filmed it at the beach. They right. saw the same thing. <laughs> the government just. <laughs> they walk up to you, take take your phone yeah. <laughs> on the beach. <laughs> just classifying stuff. I'm like, no, nope, that that's government. You can't have that. Yeah, it's government yeah. secrets now. Yeah, give me that. Yeah. yeah, but I don't think that the population would handle a release like that too well. If uh, it was something yeah, no. big. No, I agree. It'd be great. We're not ready yet. Yeah, because we don't have the technology to go do anything about it. Yeah, you know? it'd be different if we were like ready to go. If we could just go, you know, go find it. Or go travel to it, you know, or defend against it. But we definitely don't. <laughs> have well, I think that. we're I think we're safe for the most part. They haven't they have maybe they have, but they haven't destroyed us yet. Right. So right. If they're here, well, we're like, the test. We're the. I mean, we're the experiment. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Some people think we're aliens. Like we're. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. We. There's so many theories out there. So, the one thing that I do like is, uh, there's this theory that we were. Um, tampered with in our past our like genetics and all that like Mm -hmm. the human was modified Mm -hmm. and we then became this like there's no other animal here on earth that is even close to touching us true arguably maybe a chimp but even then they're just like so if you want to pick anything as someone it's like someone took a chimp and tampered with it and made it far superior and then it started reproducing and then here we are like we, we, it doesn't make sense. Like an animal, like if a, another monkey could like have this sentient thought, they would probably look at us and be like, "Why are they like that? And how come we're like this? We're living in a stupid tree yeah. fighting jaguars." Yeah, it it doesn't make any sense. Like how we are so far superior, and nothing is even. There's nothing even around us that's like close. No. It's like we maybe were like tampered with. It's so wild. Mm. You ever wonder why uh, chimps don't ever come and visit us? And, like just come from the hills and want to see what we're up to? <laughs> I, I'm n- no, I have, I've never yeah. wondered about that. <laughs> yeah. I think it was That's something that was brought up yeah. on Rogan. Oh, really? Yeah. Because he, he was saying like, well, uh, we go to the jungles and study like stupid shit. Compared to <laughs> why the, don't they come to us? Yeah. Like we... We go to the jungle to study an ant bed, which is compared to a human is f- stupid. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So it's when meaningless. you meaningless, nah, not necessarily, but yeah. So when you have a, if a monkey can think, it could look at a human and be like, "Huh, that he looks kind of like that's kind of like me." But he, he drives boats and does all this weird shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go clothes. and huh? <laughs> he wears clothes. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go and check him out. I want to see what he's up to. But they they don't have any interest in that. They don't well, you're, give a shit. You're in Bangladesh. Don't they have a fuck ton of monkeys there? Don't they? Yeah. I mean, you have you seen monkeys around? Uh, nothing like a chimp, but no. Some uh, really? s- some small ones. Yeah. Hmm. They would come onto our. I I think uh, maybe it was in Sri Lanka. Might have, might have been Sri Lanka. There was like a town somewhere in that part of the world. Mm-hmm. I, I forget where, but it was like overrun by that like orangutans. Oh. <laughs> no, that um, the like 
maybe not a ring something I saw. I don't think because orangutans are bigger, right? Uh, it, That'd be terrifying. By, by, by some kind of monkey. Yeah, maybe okay. not orangutan, but yeah, it was like, like a, a, a town that was like legitimately like under yes. siege by monkeys and like the people like human beings like couldn't like go outside yeah they would get like attacked by monkeys so, like gangs of monkeys <laughs> i'm pretty sure what you're talking about because i saw the same thing um it was in bangkok and it was oh, really? a massive amount of monkeys and essentially they were pissed yeah. because of covid oh yeah um they they, they weren't mad about covid <laughs> they i'm not wearing a mask <laughs> fuck you <laughs> No, they were pissed because COVID drove off all the tourists and there was no one there to feed them goodies. Uh, yeah, yeah. And so they were coming in the streets being like, where's the food? <laughs> yeah. Where's the snacks? Yeah. Yeah. So, and it's, uh, I think... Um, They'll fuck you up too. Yeah. Monkeys. Oh, yeah. You, you think you're tough. You get, put, you get put up with a monkey even like just half your size. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I think little kids, some little kids actually got, I think, killed by those things. Yeah. No, I, I believe swarmed. that. Swarmed. I believe it. Yeah. There, there's a hilarious video online. You can probably find it. It's, uh, I think it's in India, maybe. But uh, this this guy, he's riding a, he's got like a moped or like a, one of, like a, a motorbike. You know, they ride them everywhere over there. Uh, and I, I think he like, he got off to like take a phone call or something. And he had the bike parked on the side of the road. And this fucking monkey comes up. Starts climbing around on the on the bike and he starts pissing on the bike, so the the guy starts like throwing rocks and dirt at it and the monkey gets fucking oh, pissed. Yes, and the, the monkey just like mauls the guy. Dude. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. punches him in the face. Like he was I, going I saw at him. Video. It was weird because the monkey was fighting him like he was a human. Yeah, like he was like yeah, like throwing punches and stuff yeah. at him. Yeah, yeah, it was terrifying. That was my that's been my like, I guess reasoning why a pretty much any monkey but we'll go with like a bigger one we'll say it's just a silverback gorilla okay those things the biggest are, one we could talk about. yeah that is <laughs> yeah. the most superior mammal yeah. on this planet because it'll you, rip your fucking arms off <laughs> if you think about it they're the only animal that i can think of that is capable of doing all the attacks like all methods of attack biting punching i'm sure they could kick yeah just slamming yeah. ripping you apart yeah like they have it all yeah. Um, a and dog can, can climb, bite you. Right. They won't punch you. Yeah. They can't climb up a tree. A bear can bite you, climb up a tree, mm -hmm. claw you. They can't punch you. No. Um, kangaroo. Oh, slap kick the you. shell, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, kangaroos are like borderline, kind of like in, as far as like uh, methods to attack. They kangaroos can do like a lot. They they punch, they punch you, kick, yeah. bite you, kick you. They're um, fucking assholes too. Yeah, Have they you can't, seen them. Yeah, they can't. Yeah, they're like aggressive. Yes. Some of them. they'll fuck. They'll fuck you up. Yeah, I wouldn't want to. Especially no. the red uh, kangaroos. Yeah, the, which is the big ones that are like yeah, flex, they're <laughs> fucking yoked, dude. Uh huh. <laughs> a, a kangaroo can't grab you though. Doesn't uh, have no. thumbs. No. So I think well, very few ham animals have thumbs. Like uh, yeah. raccoons have thumbs. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, what's the word? Uh, there's a word. Oh, for... um, marsupials. Marsupials. No, no, no. no. Right? Uh, no, it's the name for the thumb. That might be the name, but the name for the thumb. It it it's a it it's a a thumb that has the ability to touch your other fingers, so you can grip. Is that not a mar? What, what what's a marsupial? I think that marsupial. Or marsupial. Uh, it's 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 uh maybe I'm, maybe I'm not saying it right. It's something like I think it, I think it might be marsupial. Is it? Uh, Am I sorry? I, mean, I think it does. Uh, maybe I'm maybe I'm making that up. But I, yeah. Yeah, I think Jamie. So. <laughs> yeah where is he i don't you know i uh that fucking we were talking about the weinstein guy mm -hmm. weinstein whatever i like i don't like it when the guests like talk to jamie and like hey uh, pull oh. up zoom like that annoys me I, like, I thought it was hilarious when he said that when he was like can i say it and he was like sure he was like jamie pull that up <laughs> but yeah. he was being funny about it yeah but well even joe was kind of like sounded kind of like, like aggressive a little bit oh Kind of I like think demanding. Joe, Joe treats Jamie c consistently like shit. Oh, you, I really yeah. do. Yeah. He, I he, just kind of noticed it yesterday. but Yeah. No, that was a good example of him. No, yeah. I think he treats him very badly. <laughs> like, it's borderline fucking cruel. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. Hey, yesterday bitch. was the first time that I kind of really <laughs> noticed it, but maybe maybe it has been going on for a while. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I just kind of felt like. You know, he's not like a fucking slave. <laughs> like, yeah, he's helping he's, you out. Yeah, he, he's uh, you probably should be glad that you have him because this show would never make it 
if yeah he produces around. like the whole thing doesn't yeah. he he does all the sound mastering and yeah all that yeah. He, he does uh 80 85 percent of the show right joe just talks right schedule he, he doesn't even he probably doesn't even uh schedule them oh yeah and, and actually i know he doesn't because they have a manager something like that yeah they probably have a manager and then uh jamie has a lot to do with it too yeah because um he brought that up one time joe he was saying he was saying something about i think it was when he was talking to alex jones he was mm. like oh if you saw how many people tried to get on this show it would blow your mind yeah he's like it's so hard to like just get people on mm-hmm. and then he was like yeah nobody gets through jamie he's like fort knox motherfucker because <laughs> i guess people probably hit up it goes to jamie first which it probably does because people probably like message the joe rogan experience on uh instagram which is jamie yeah and he probably sees it and he's like uh no <laughs> you're not coming on the show yeah well the other thing is i was i was actually thinking about the other day is uh they're they got to be like booked out so for, they're probably what do you think they're like a month two months out already scheduled yeah i think they're probably maybe even more yeah well, probably if upwards not more. Of half a year i could see oh really six months i could i could but then it probably changes too like they probably you, have like tentative stuff all the way out there yeah then, well like, because a lot of this stuff is like timely i feel like some of the guests yeah you know it's got to be relevant by mm-hmm. the time they come on you know yeah it's got to be but i think uh people will definitely take precedence over certain people because if uh right and i wish so he um because I, I like the UFO people. That's like my favorite. You bring someone that can talk about UFOs, and I'm like all in. Mm. And he said, um, well, within reason, if they're fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. going to say. I don't dive in actual, too deep on yeah. that. Um, but he said that he has a, had a lot more. Because somebody was talking about Trevor. I think the next guy that came on after he had the abducted storytelling dude. He brought. He was like, "Yeah, I saw Trevor's uh, thing. It was really good." And this, thing, he was like, "Yeah, I got so many more coming on, mm. like of that area." Mm. And I'm over here thinking, like, "Well, I haven't uh, seen him. It's been yeah. many months. Oh, I haven't yeah. seen a single of so many more that mm-hmm. you're talking of." So yeah. I don't. I feel like if if someone like with a legit story just hit him up, he'd be like, "Yeah, you're on I'll, next week. Yeah, I'll have you here tomorrow." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, he. Uh, he loves that UFO stuff. Yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah. He, and he has for a long time. Yeah, yeah. He had that show, Joe Rogan questions everything. I never watched it. Oh, really? Yeah, I've never heard of it. Jesse Ventura also had a show similar. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm. It was called Conspiracy Theory. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm not. I'm not real big into like the UFO thing, but I love space. I'm yeah. all about space and extra uh, er, inter- interplanetary travel, interstellar travel. Yeah, me too. Space exploration. I'm a uh, big time. I'm all about it, but I'm just not as I don't think about it as much because. Oh uh, no, no, I'm not like I don't read about it on a daily basis yeah. or anything. But like uh, that podcast I was listening to today, was, they were talking about how to, uh, the the ways in which we need to build the structures for a Mars habitat. Mm-hmm. They're talking about how to. They're talking about uh, 3D printing all of the structures. Yeah. Yeah, that cone looking thing. It just goes around and mm-hmm. builds. Yeah, I yeah. saw I saw that video. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I I'm all about like the space travel and getting to Mars, but it's just like it's not going to be in our lifetime that people are like it's it's too. So? No, I I think we're going to be there soon. Yeah. But as far as just like. Oh, like living Mars there full time. Why, why would you want to live there? Take a flight there. Oh, no, you wouldn't want to yeah. live there. You'll it's die. It's a horrible place to be. Yeah. I was talking about you this. will die. <laughs> yeah, I was talking about this um, uh, before. Um, it's not. It, it's more safe to go to the most barren place on this earth to live. Yeah, you can go to Antarctica. It, yeah, uh, the Sahara Desert. Yeah, it's because at least there you're within a few hours of yeah a population, maybe or a, a couple of days at the most. Yeah, you know. Catch a flight. <laughs> yeah. So hit your sat phone. You got a fucking bird on the ground mm-hmm. in like, you know, a couple you can hours. Communicate. Yeah. yeah. So how is it at all attractive and everything to go to a, a planet where that's all it is? And then it's like, you, you're hey, not going anywhere. <laughs> you die. You're, you get a, you get like in a fix. You're going to die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can't, there's nobody coming for help. Right. Even at least here on earth, you can be in the most desolate place, but within a few hours or days, 
someone will be there to right. help you. Yeah. If you have the correct communication equipment and all sure. that. So uh, this idea that I think maybe some people have it maybe wrong in their head. Like mm. we're going to, uh, we're going to go to Mars and we're going to live and then we'll be good. It's yeah. Like, are you serious? Yeah. You, nah. are, it's going to okay. be many, many attempts. I challenge anybody to just be like, you know what? We're going to, we're going to, uh, I don't know the word, uh, build up or industrialize the Sahara Desert. By the end of this year, we're going to make the whole desert livable and it's going to be a nice place to live. You know how long that would take? That's here on Earth. Mm-hmm. And now you're talking about doing this on another planet, <laughs> starting from zero. Yeah. Good luck. It's not going to be in our lifetime. That's like yeah. this thing that, yeah, we're, we're saving the Earth. Yeah. We're not on the Earth anymore. <laughs> yeah. Not. That's, that's why I, like, I don't think too much about it because it's like, it's great, but... It's going to be the prison system. It'll be the prison colony. Yeah. That's where we send everybody. And then we'll keep Earth to ourselves. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> just, it, it's a, it's a, uh, it's two, a, um, status, like whatever your status is. It's yeah. It's like, have um, you seen the Elysium movie? Is that yes. What about to say? I was Matt about to Damon? say District 9. Yeah. Elysium. Oh, yes. Yeah. Kind of same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Elysium. Elysium is literally, it's like the, yep. the utopia world and then the Earth is like yep. a shithole. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. Uh, it's a good movie. Yeah. It is a good one. Um, and then uh, on that podcast, they were talking about the the radiation on on Mars is like, it's it, it's crazy. Like you get like years worth of sunlight, like sun radiation, in one day, on Mars. You know, mm-hmm. like you can't survive there. Like bare skin. Like you'll die. You'll melt. <laughs> yeah, and that comes into like growing stuff. And all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like right. everything we are gonna do on Mars, it's it's like we're we're not living on Mars. We're using Mars as a place to put a building with to then Earth live technology. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. You're basically just buying land. Right. You're not <laughs> transplanting. Yeah. yeah. And Elon was talking about how some ideas to get Mars terraformed. So mm-hmm. it's like growing stuff, mm-hmm. and I think one of the theories I don't I don't think they would do this, but it's, they're trying to melt the ice caps uh, on Earth or Mars. Oh. So we're basically going to just show up and destroy a planet <laughs> to <laughs> try to live there. Yeah. What, are they, what are they melt the ice caps to flood it with with water? Or uh, it gets an atmosphere going. Oh, okay. basically, yeah. Huh. Why? Because it was the ice release like oxygen or something as it melts or something like that yeah so it would release a large amount of water and then vapor you know I guess okay it, basically it's like steamy yeah so yeah it starts i get it hopefully it doesn't blow away from the <laughs> sun because like it blows our atmosphere away <laughs> yeah yeah well or the sun will just irradiate it yeah right so yeah. i don't know how they're gonna do this but no it's not, yeah it's, 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 it's something that's so far in the future it's r- radically different than mm-hmm earth <laughs> it's going to be miserable the first like several generations probably oh yeah like, uh, yeah is it even worth it like why uh, what's it's, what's the, what's it's the, good uh, I mean, it's i'd almost be like, more interested in them putting all that time and effort to get in us uh, on earth or, yeah i mean that's or getting us where sorry <clears throat> it might as well start with earth um but going to i think kepler whatever 2b whatever the closest uh earth-like planet is to us it's not far away it's like within two light years well i mean you got to get to mars first though right i mean that's that's i mean but mars is is just a barren that's astronomically different than we're astronomically further away oh yeah you know i mean light travel now but you're going to a place that has water yeah and it looks like it has well they say mars has water it's just subsurface yeah yeah so i guess the like we don't have any options like, right. We're not going to Venus. We're not going no. outside of the solar system. That's just out of the question. We're not going to Mercury. Just the only, our only shot. So. Hey, where's Kepler? Uh, Kepler is, uh, it's, it's like two light years away. It's a good ways away. I don't know out, where it's at. Out of the solar system though. Yeah. Right. No, it's, yeah. out, of, it's okay. out of the solar system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but it's, you know, it's in our galaxy somewhere, but. Right. Um, I don't. I feel like we could come up with something <laughs> and get there in a long time. Not not anything too soon, but it's almost like if we got there 
and 100 years, at least we're starting with a planet that has a lot of stuff in place. Yeah. In theory. I don't know how much they know about this, these other planets. They call them Earth-like, so in my mind, it's like has Earth-like water, right. yeah. trees. Yeah. yeah. You show up and there's something there. Some living thing. Just a giant mistake. <laughs> yeah. They're like, oh, where'd you come from? Right. You come to our place. I'm yeah. going to come to your place now. Yeah. Oh, man. Jesus. Yeah. I definitely think there's something out there. Uh, got, there has to be. It better be. Yeah. You yeah, know yeah. the uh, yeah. Fermi paradox? The what? Fermi paradox. Uh, I've heard the name. I'm not familiar with it, though. Yeah. So it's. Um, I can't remember who came up with it. Probably uh, Fermi. Yeah. Well, I can't remember who, like... I'm, I'm, that was a joke. <laughs> it probably is Mr. Fermi. Yeah. Yeah. Someone, someone like, popularized it. But it's the idea that if there's... Um, well, I think someone said a quote that was really famous about it. It was something along the lines of either we're the... Either there is life out there or there, or we are the only life. Either way, both of which is very scary or right. something like that. Yeah, yeah. That's and true. The Fermi paradox is okay. So there's the assumption is a lot of people agree that there's life out in the universe, and they also agree that this life could be millions of years advanced, right? More advanced to us to the point where it's um, like I mean, look at us. We give off a signature. We like radio waves. Like you could, if you're observing from the outside, you would see us, right? So the Fermi well, paradox. They have like a cloaking. Yeah. It's all stealth. Uh huh. Yeah. The Fermi paradox is okay. Well, where are they? Right. Like, what we should be able to see them. Yeah, you would pick up on them. Yeah, I mean, we're lo- we're looking at other galaxies at this point. Mm-hmm. You know, we could we're looking at those other planets. Mm-hmm. You know, we have to have there has to be way. Well, maybe not. How far does that energy travel? Like, how far how far does our signature emit? Well, it goes forever, but it's just uh, we haven't. Does been, it? Yeah, it's it it uh, goes forever, but it's just. Uh, been since like the 1940s that we've ever since before that we had never admitted anything that like made it out into deep space it wasn't until 1940 uh or the 30s it was hitler's one of hitler's speeches actually was strong enough to punch out and make it out into space are you kidding me Mm-mm. no <laughs> his, his voice on the on the ground not, no not <laughs> wait no a, a transmission through like a broadcast. Oh. The radio. They they must have admitted it. I thought you were saying like he's like screaming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was, I was yeah. like, what? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you've heard his speech. Yeah, he's fucking yelling yeah. the whole time. No, it's not. Yes. His voice alone through the loudspeakers they had was so loud. That's the way you made it sound. Yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> I meant that it was transmitted. Okay. Yeah. So it's just, that's just now <laughs> making it out to some star with maybe some planets around it. And like Just now? You mean? Like, yeah, wait. well, just within I it was on the news. It's like within the past few years. So the point is, like, <laughs> we haven't been. In, so the transmission from the from the thirties or forties, yes, just made it out. Yeah. So if they're listening, they're like, "What the fuck is going on?" <laughs> Meanwhile, it's like, "No, no, no, it's not like that anymore." Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's funny. <laughs> we haven't been admitting long enough to for to, and it, to but then figure it out. It could be the same thing for other places, other stars. But it's like well, there's yeah, so many. How? Oh my god! Yeah, there's yeah. countless stars. Yeah. One of my favorite, most favorite videos on YouTube is uh, this video called the Andromeda Galaxy in 4K. And it's this giant, it's this huge picture. It's like, it says it's like 100-something gigs. Right. And they just take a cross-section of it, and they zoom in, and it's extremely high quality. Hmm. And um, it, it just, like, pans around this little cross-section of the galaxy. And just the amount of stars... And oh, yeah. so much st- It looks like static on a TV. Mm-hmm. There's so, so many. many. Yeah. So much. And when you see that, it's like all those are stars, all of which have planets potentially. Some of those planets right. potentially have life. Right. And we're the only ones. I just can't it believe can't that. can't be. Yeah, it's yeah, impossible. Yeah. It's impossible to believe that. Yeah. But then the Fermi paradox is all right, well, where are they? Right. Are they interdimensional? They're right next right. to us and we don't know it. Or they have the. Or they, they're blocking the yeah they're, they're cloaked yeah but Which, i uh, mean that's like a sci-fi kind yeah of way of thinking but uh well the other thing is like you can obviously it's obviously it's reasonable to believe that there's life there's you know extra you know uh there's life out there somewhere mm-hmm. but is it like 
intelligent life or is it just like there's bacteria they found yeah. bacteria and stuff but you know is there other like insect is it i mean is there life but is it like insects or is it like a human type mm-hmm. thing you know this so it's kind of debatable yeah but i mean uh, any life yeah. would be enough to impress me yeah like, sure sure yeah. sure have you have you been in like a, a desert environment anywhere or uh, uh, no. uh no i would the, love to the, the stars are incredible yes yeah um that that's something uh i've been i've i have thought of before yeah um, i've been out in death valley and you can see them it's like yeah incredible so it's i would one like of the darkest places on earth it is uh I'm, maybe not yeah kind of made i made that up but uh, <laughs> sound believable yeah. i mean it, it might be yeah there's very very little uh light pollution mm-hmm. yeah i would also like to go out into the middle of the ocean like people that have been on ships oh, yeah. like is that you can imagine how dark that is yeah like there's like nothing there right because you're not even mm, yeah but you get the if if the moon is out oh yeah and it's a clear night you're gonna get reflection from yeah, the water that's true but the the best time to see the stars in the water or on land is when it's a new moon right yeah nothing right super no clouds and no moon. probably certain temperatures so the haze is less mm-hmm. in the atmosphere but yeah that's that's something that I want to go and see. I mean, where I where I grew up, there's not too much light pollution. You can see the stars pretty good. Yeah. But being able to see the stars in a level where there's no light pollution is something completely. Yeah, different. it's mm-hmm. it's crazy. And that that's how the night sky looked for a very long time, <laughs> way longer than it has now. Yeah. Everywhere around the world. Yeah. It wasn't until Isn't recently that, that we started losing, <laughs> like we, uh, that's like, that's where we, it's pretty you know, inspiring, I guess, maybe. It's pretty, like, eye-opening to look up and see all that up there. It yeah, it's crazy. You, it, it gives you that, like, check. So when you're in L.A. and you look up and you don't see shit, yeah. there's no, like, oh, it's just a black curtain over my head. There's nothing there. Mm-hmm. There's nothing, like, the thought of Planes. life. The, it ends because you yeah you just don't see anything mm-hmm. really yeah but that's true yeah i i, I do want to go somewhere that has very little light pollution plus i like i would i like doing astrophotography it's actually really oh fun. really yeah 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 there's a there, i had uh you can get an app on mm-hmm. your phone and it'll, it has a map of, yeah it maps the light pollution there's a couple websites too yeah yeah uh you do dark sky finder how do you do that do you stack the photos do you do do you take like a thousand fucking photos and stack um them? So that I haven't gotten to that level yeah, of uh, photo editing because okay, that's when yeah. you start getting into Photoshop and I don't really mess with Photoshop yeah, too much. Yeah, you like morph them all together. Yeah, I'm just a Lightroom guy. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, you, you would stack them if you're wanting to do a star trail photo. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, how do you do it? Um, so you just take a shot. Or? Yeah, I just do it. I just do a single picture, just long exposure, make it make okay. it like 15 seconds. Yeah. Now, how does it how does it turn out? Can you like see like galaxies? Oh yeah, I mean, I'll show you. I'll show you after this. I have some pictures that I took, and this is how I know when you're in a place that has no light pollution. You're just what your photos are gonna look like are gonna be incredible. Because yeah. I, I took a uh, nothing too crazy, mm-hmm. um, like setup wise, but yeah, I was yeah. able to crank out a picture after putting it in a Lightroom that looks pretty good. Hmm. I mean, it's not even a low light pollution area. So, but That's yeah, cool. as far as taking it, just set up on a tripod yeah. and. 10 15 there's a how certain, long how long is your exposure um you have to dial it in you have to get the iso and the you know all the standard things right you gotta yeah. get the right equation basically but there is a certain there is like an actual equation that uh you can't go over a certain amount depending on your lens focal length you like divide it by some something mm-hmm. and i'll tell you the maximum aperture time or uh max maximum uh shutter exposure right before you start getting star trails and your stars Cause moving. Yeah. Cause they're moving. Um, you want to have the shutter open where it lets in enough light, but not for the stars to move because they'll start to smudge okay. and they won't look like tack sharp. Yeah. That's the other thing too. You're getting your sharp, uh, your focus nailed. You just have to manually focus it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, you're like, focusing on infinity basically. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's no like, yeah, there's no the, object. There. The camera yeah. can't like see what it's going to focus on. So, yeah. Um, so I've saw this one person, he even, uh, 
had this little magnifying little cup thing that it would put on a screen hmm. and you would find one bright star and oh, then wow. get it tack sharp on that because hmm. all you gotta do is find one bright star yeah sure and then focus it from there yeah yeah um but he had that and that's interesting on the a6600 it has this um it just has a digital focus magnifying assist okay so it, it just digitally zooms, in, zooms in yeah but there's a little bit of because then you're limited to like the resolution, resolution of, of your screen, screen. yeah, yeah. So when, if you magnify it, you're kind of just magnifying a... You're blowing it up. Yeah, yeah. a bad image. So maybe it's better to magnify it with like an actual gli- glass eyepiece. Might be the same thing, but... Um, mm, yeah, it's probably half a dozen one way, half a dozen the other. Yeah. And then you can get into like painting with painting. like a flashlight when you have a long exposure. Some people will take... Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. And they'll, they'll like paint a tree. Yeah, yeah. Basically. Um... I did take uh, one picture where I did stack two photos. It was something more simple. I'll show it to you. Um, I just took a picture. It was on a basketball court. And I wanted the basketball hoop and like the backboard and all that to be in focus as, along with the background. Mm-hmm. But, you know, photography is impossible. You can't focus on two things at once. Right. So I just uh, took one, exposed it, and focused it for that, and then took another one. Mm, and just then, put it on top. Yep, yeah, yeah. stacked them. So it's pretty easy in concept. Yeah. But then when people get into like those uh, um, little mounts, motorized m- mounts that they put their cameras on and it rotates it, it tracks the stars and it takes oh, a picture. Yeah. 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 You, you see those shots pretty common in like uh, Discovery, mm-hmm. like their stuff where the camera moves and then the stars are moving with it. Right. Yeah. That's all done on some kind of mechanized thing that you get in sync and you got to right. time it and all that. Right. You yeah. program it. Yeah, I kind of want to get a telescope, but they're Ooh. fairly yeah. expensive, I think, for like a pretty good one. Yeah, but they make them. They make. I know my uncle has one. He's got. He's got like a decent one. I don't think it's like anything crazy or anything, but uh, it's like it's like motorized and everything, mm. and you can you you yeah you sync it up to a star and yeah. it, it follows it, it tracks it. Yeah, because like I was looking at the moon, and. I mean, what what's the Earth rotating at? Like fucking two thousand fucking. Like, yeah, it's who, pretty. Who knows? Pretty fast. I don't, yeah, it's ridiculous. So like, you know, you're looking at the moon. It you're only in frame mm-hmm. for twenty seconds. Yeah. it's gone. You know, so when you you can sync it up, mm-hmm. it follows it. Yeah, and it it just tracks it. You know, mm-hmm. it's pretty simple. I have a uh, Celestron a Celestron uh, telescope back home. Okay, it's yeah, it's pretty decent. I, I think I I've heard that that uh, name. Yeah, they're yeah. pretty Celestron pretty popular in the telescope world they're yeah. like a big brand how much was it do you, you know um head? no i don't it was a long time ago got okay. it. it's a good one yeah uh, it was i'd like to get one I, I, uh, yeah, definitely i'm definitely interested it. in the um one of my most favorite thing. things i looked at uh because it's i'm in a place with like hardly any light pollution but it's still difficult to find the milky way ga- or the uh andromeda galaxy the mm. other galaxy that's the that circular one no we're we're the circular one Right. No, yeah. Milky Way is no, uh, ours is a elliptical. more of a spiral, oh, uh, okay. like a like it's blade getting yes, yeah. yes. No, the Andromeda is, Galaxy is like is that the circular one? Yeah, the blade looking one. Yeah, when you type in galaxy on Google Images, Andromeda Galaxy is always going to come up because it's very beautiful looking, pretty nice. But um, you know, looking at like Jupiter and all that, and Saturn is fun because I mean those are really easy to find. You just look up and you can yeah. find them. Yeah. Uh, looking at Venus is pretty cool too. Seeing the, it in its phases, Cause it, it goes uh, has like phases like our moon does. Oh, okay. It'll be like a crescent. Yeah. What was it? Uh, probably. I think it was back in. Back in December, maybe when Mars and oh, Jupiter yeah Jupiter lined up. Yeah. Was that right? No, it was Saturn and um, Saturn and Jupiter lined up. I think it was. I can't remember. What was it Mars? Mars I'm pretty sure it was Saturn and Jupiter. Saturn and Jupiter lined yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah, I remember every night I would go out at the same Check time. To go eat. I watched it live. It was pretty cool. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, didn't. I didn't see it. I watched a stream of it. Oh, uh, you, d- you didn't see it up in the sky? No, not yeah. from where I was at. Yeah. I would go out uh, every night around the same time to go eat. And I would always turn around and look up. And Check every on. night they're like, eat, eat. getting closer. It's getting closer. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, they finally, it was called like the Great Conjunction. Yes. Yeah. Um. Was it like eight hundred every eight eight hundred years? I think. Yeah, it's not gonna happen for a very long time. No. Yeah. No. I went home for the uh, total solar eclipse in twenty seventeen. Oh. Uh-huh. Yeah. 
I was I was in Virginia for that. I, yeah. I, it was that was the one. It was like in the middle of the day, right? It was yeah. Like three o'clock or something. Yeah. Yeah. And it, uh, it's just, my hometown just happened to be one of the best areas. To oh view no, it. kidding. Yeah. So I was like, I literally. T- you go home. Did you put the fucking the look. Did you look at it with the glasses? Oh uh, no, my dad. He's a redneck, and he had he, he had this piece <laughs> of welding glass. Oh, perfect. For, that's what you want. Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. And I I, uh, I stacked two of them on top of each other. Yeah, and yeah, it works. Oh yeah, worked good. That shit. It's really dark. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but it was it was wild. Just like seeing, because in Virginia it was probably more partial. It didn't get completely blacked out. Uh no, it it was like a uh, dusk. Really? Okay. Yeah, it was. It was. It wasn't black. It yeah. Was, it was dark. Yeah. Oh, it was amazing. It was like it didn't make any sense. Like if <laughs> if, if you were alive before like the news or anything, uh-huh. and oh, that you would shit happened, yeah. you would be like, "What the fuck?" Scared. <laughs> yeah. You would think the world was probably ending. Yeah. yeah it uh, it was, it was so interesting because it's like, it, it doesn't like uh, it's not like getting dark like when the sun goes down, getting dark. It was just like someone was just turning the brightness down right. or exposure yeah, down. It's, like well, it's all the shadows too. were it takes, still, in, you know, five ten minutes. Yeah, all the shadows were still in place. They yeah. the shadows weren't going away. It's just everything was getting a little darker. Dim. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah. someone was taking the light switch yeah. and just one of those adjusting ones, <laughs> and then like it was getting cooler, mm-hmm. and then uh, yeah, it it was funny too because like as soon as the moon, it, it's like it goes in an instant when you can't look up because even if the sun is poking out just a little bit around it, it's still too bright to look at. Yeah. And then, and like an instant, it's just like, it's, <laughs> then you can see it's the gone. ring Yeah, the, the, for the, um, the sun mm-hmm. going around the moon. Yeah. Yeah. Going around the moon. And then, yeah, just like it went away, it came back mm-hmm. and like, you're just looking at it. It's like, boom. Like yeah. The light well, it's kind of funny. You, you mentioned like how before the news, like there's still people in the world, you know, that, aren't connected to the internet 24 yeah. seven. Yeah. <laughs> like, so, you know, fucking South America and Africa yeah. and pretty much, you know, everywhere. So when that happens, so, they I mean, just... they're, they're probably like, what the fuck? You know, yeah. they don't know. How the fuck do they know? Yeah. There's probably some, even, uh, some crackheads in South Carolina. They were like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was so funny. The hill people. All the in Appalachia. Yeah. <laughs> All the, the social media woke people were, you know, obviously it's like a big deal. Like, mm-hmm. South Carolina had some giant influx of people coming in just to see this. And, like, everybody was like... Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, everybody was like, film it. it. It makes sense. They hyped it up because that means money for our state. Yeah. So they want people to show up. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, everybody's obviously filming it and stuff. And it's so funny because uh, your camera auto-adjusts to the, like, it being dark out. Right. So all their videos and pictures, like, they didn't capture yeah, anything. Yeah, you're not going to see it. It was just like, I didn't take any pictures. I wanted to enjoy Look it. Look at it. Yeah. 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 Like, the crickets started, like, chirping. Yeah. And it, it was just weird. Like, it literally went in, just nature went into, like, nighttime mode. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, that day was shorter than usual. Eh, it's night now. So, mm-hmm. yeah. That, yeah, how do you, what's your opinion on uh, the film it or experience it? Oh, I'm a uh, experience it kind of guy. Yeah. Like, I don't even take my phone out concerts. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, the last concert I went to, I took one picture before it even started, and then... That's it. Yeah. And then you got people just... They fucking uh, video filming. the whole thing. Yeah. And I guess their reasoning is uh, they don't want it... Want, they want to get it on camera and have it for themselves, but I'm thinking, um, you know how many people are filming right now? It's going to be on YouTube. Yeah. Like, they're doing the work for you. Right. Just, so you look can it sit, up. <laughs> yeah. Just look it up. Like, yeah. why do you, your video is the same as theirs. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially if they're just, like, filming the show. Like, they're not even, like, in it. Like, I would get, like, if they're making a video and they're, it's, like, they're and their buddies, like, hanging out. Because, yeah, then you can't get that. But more often than not, they're, like, filming them, singing, yeah. and performing. It's, like, this is going to be on YouTube in... 50 different versions. Right. You'll be able like to tomorrow. pick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't. There's no need to film it. Yeah. There's nothing. So p- people video everything now. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. They live through they their Literally just screen. walk around with the phone. Right? Yeah. Seen the uh, vloggers is maximum cringe. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, the, or the, twi- uh, the Twitch. Str- no, not the vloggers. The streamers. The Twitch streamers. Uh, they got their phone on their stupid. Oh, thing. yeah. They live stream. Yeah. Walking around. Yeah. And they have like a mic. Yeah. And they're just like walking around and 
filming. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> you just some people love it. They like watch it. Yeah. Yeah, they have to because people wouldn't be doing it. Yeah. Which is crazy. It's like what? You you're walking around. Oh, it's like a live travel video, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but people watch that. It, it, they're just like missing out on their life. Right. Like they could go. Oh yeah, I like I like this area that he's filming. I'm just gonna watch him. Yeah, you can buy a plane ticket and Live, go there in uh, vicariously. Yeah, you can just buy a plane ticket and yeah. go there. Yeah, um, but I don't like the there's there's a certain there's certain stuff you should definitely film, but a concert, for example, is <laughs> not one of them. It's yeah. just, you're not experiencing. It. You're just gonna you're gonna go back and watch it on your and phone. It's not gonna be the same. And it's just like. Yeah, it, yeah. I don't even like with the eclipse. Yeah, I, just, I took I took a few pictures, but when it was like actually like blacked out, dark mode. Yeah, no, uh, that you have to just sit there Watch and take it, it in because yeah. it's only gonna last a few minutes, and it'll be the last time it ever happens, probably in your lifetime, mm-hmm. unless you move around the world and right follow go, them around. Yeah, because it happens yeah. like relatively frequently, doesn't it? Yeah, like every yeah. five ten years. Yeah, they uh. Speaking of that, there's actually this area. The only place that happens um, in the continental, well, in the United States, it, this doesn't happen at all in the continental United States. It happens in Hawaii. There's this uh, phenomenon that happens where the sun is directly overhead and there's no shadows anywhere in nature. <laughs> there's none. So everything looks like they're just like photoshopped, like cropped yeah. in. Yeah, like right. They don't have any shadow. Yeah. Because it doesn't happen um, in the continental no U.S. Shadow. Yeah, so you have to go to Hawaii, but it happens to other places in the world. Yeah, because, like, I mean, everything has – the shadow makes a huge difference yeah. in the way things look. And everything. Yeah. Everything has it. Like, we, we use it to judge it, things. Right. And, yeah, depth yeah. and – So, yeah. when you take it away, it's just so, like, strange to right. our brain. It's like, like 2D Whoa. almost. It looks yeah. flat. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's a sight to see. I'll probably look that Pretty up. Well. Yeah. All right, man. We can wrap it up. We're at two hours. Yeah, that one flew by once again. Yeah, yeah flying like, by. What? Flying by once again. Yeah, yeah. Good space talk. I'm ha- I'm glad we talked about that. that was, yeah, that's cool. You want you want to uh, wrap it up with a 30 minute COVID conversation? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Why not? No. no. I'm I so will sick do it again. of COVID, dude. So sick of it. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in, everyone. Yeah. You have a good day. Bye. Peace. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good one. That was fun.